Okay, we should be live. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, and welcome to the 5 p.m. Village of Mamaroneck Board of Trustee work session. Um, what we're going to do tonight, because we have a lot of staff uh, who are here um, to uh, participate in items on the agenda. We're going to do those items on the agenda so that the staff uh, doesn't have to wait a couple hours before they, they, they get their concerns heard. Uh, but before I do that, there is one thing on the agenda uh, for tonight. That's a board of trustees thing, and it's on for the regular meeting, and it just seems very easy. Uh, uh, first, I need a motion to open this meeting. So moved. Second. All right. All, right. All in favor? Uh, aye. aye. And that's extension of ad hoc ethics code review, and that'll be extending that to the end of the year. Uh, does anybody have any concerns with putting that on the regular meeting? No? Nope. Okay, so let, let's just say we did that and put that on for regular meeting, and that's one under our belt right there. Thank you. In the first minute, boom, we're knocking them out. Uh, okay, so Sandy is here, uh, Chief uh, Chief uh, DeRuz is here, and uh, Jeff LaRusso is here, and they're going to talk to us about the Port Security Grant. Uh, Sandy, you want to start? Sure, good afternoon. So as you know, we've been working with a grant writing firm, Millennium, and they advise- oh, Sandy, me, just let me point out that it's, it's, it's item 1L for people who are watching at home. Perfect. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. So one of the um, grants in particular was a port security grant. And through that grant, um, it would allow us the ability to purchase uh, a new vessel. Um, so I, I did send a uh, brief synopsis of the reasons why um, we do need a new vessel for the Bay Constables uh, to operate during the season. Um, so I don't know how much in detail you want me to go over that. Um, but a couple of things I will tell you is the, the total project would be for the, the vessel itself and any necessary equipment is uh, there is a quote of $417,056.68. So this particular grant is a 75%, 25%, meaning that the village would have to match uh, the 25%. So that works out to be um, $104,000. Two sixty four or seventeen cents, um, but with that we would be selling one of the current vessels, and it's estimated that the village would receive approximately sixty five to seventy five thousand for that vessel, which would leave an approximate balance of thirty thousand to forty thousand dollars. So Sandy, all in with forty thousand dollars. Again, there are no guarantees. It depends how much we would be able to get for the existing vessel that we would sell. But um, in speaking with Jeff, the, the guesstimate is approximately sixty-five to seventy-five thousand is what we could um, expect to get from selling that boat. Okay, uh, Mr. Natchez, you have a question? Yeah, uh, in the backup, it said that the uh, deadline to submit the SF four twenty-four was May seventh. Has that been submitted? So we had to submit a just a preliminary, um, basically of our intention to want to go forward, but the final um, grant submission is due this week. So we didn't want to go forward, obviously, with any kind of final submission until we spoke to the board about that. I, I understand, but I my question was, did we meet the May 7th? That it was the form SF? 424, whatever that is, was that filed? Is yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jeff, do you have anything to say, Ms. LaRusso? Jeff? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, now I can hear you. Yeah. Uh, now, San, uh, Chief DeRusso pretty much said everything. Um, some things to keep in mind is, you know, we're a seasonal unit but we are very active. Um, our season runs from you know, May to November. And I kind of did a little uh, 
just done through the reports from the last five years. And, you know, we've responded to 74 search and rescues in those five years. Um, we've assisted 179 vessels and we did uh, 675 on water inspections and another 258 uh, land-based and boat ramp inspections. So we're an active unit and this, uh, this grant and this new boat would help us extend our season and be you know, available when the weather's not the best in, in some of the conditions that we can't go out in now. You know? So. Why is that? What, what, what does this boat have that will allow you to do that? Well, this boat is, it's more enclosed and watertight inside. And also it will have heat and air conditioning. You know, a few years ago, I pulled 11 girls out of the water in the beginning of April. Um, and I had no way to keep them warm. The only thing I can do is wrap them up in blankets because this boat doesn't have heat. Okay. You know, those are the types of things that these boats, the newer boats now all come with because they're geared towards law enforcement and search and rescue. The boats that we have are just basically converted fishing boats that they basically converted into, you know, law enforcement boats. But these boats are built with that, you know, in mind and have all of the latest equipment to, to do search and rescue and that kind of stuff. So and Jeff, and just, just correct me if I'm wrong, the, the current vessel that we have that we're talking about um, selling is close to its uh, life expectancy. It's just not at its life expectancy, yeah. Because if you, it's a residential, you know, pleasure boat that was converted it's you know only designed to last about 15 years and it's 12 years old now and a new vessel will last approximately 25 to 30 years right um go ahead dan um you know i'm impressed with the report the one thing though i don't understand is why you why there's a statement in here that because it had fiberglass hull it can't be in the water in the winter the fiberglass if you get a lot of ice it could you know, when the ice shifts, it can potentially crack the fiberglass. Whereas the aluminum, there's, an, there's a, a double plate around the water line. So if the ice crushes it, it's not going to buckle that aluminum. Hmm. That's why these boats are all built to, to be in the water all year round. You have an icebreaker because the village of Mamaroneg icebreaker. <laughs> <laughs> It's less, it's less a skim ice if you try to break uh, any substance ice with an aluminum boat, you're in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> Not designed to be an ice breaker, but just ice pressure against, you know, when it's at the dock, it okay. can damage like fiberglass would. Does anyone have any questions or concerns on the board? Are you planning to leave this in all year round? This boat will be left in primarily all year round, yes. Then you're going to need a bubble system, even if it's a little hull. Yeah, which we have in place now. We have ice, ice machines now. Is everybody okay with moving forward with this? So what's the action? What are we, what are we approving? We're approving them applying for the grant. Okay. So, but so basically, if we receive grant approval and grant funding, the village would have to pay the 25% balance on that. Yeah. That I understand, but it was not explicit here that that's, we had breached that. I see all your faces now, I kind of get yeah. it, but uh, it's not that, that uh, it was not that clear. So essentially, you want to move forward. I just uh, I go ahead. Yeah, I think. Apply uh, for the grant. Yeah, yeah, yeah I talked to the chief, let's make sure there was board support to move forward. To with this grant application. application. And this is one of the items that can be, is not in the capital budget, but would have to be folded into. Yes. It's not you in the capital to, budget? Not you at have all. to amend. I don't know if this boat, Victor, I don't know if this boat was in the capital budget. Um, I didn't look through it today, but you would have to amend the capital budget that was approved last year to include this boat. Oh, because it would have to, okay. Uh, if, if, if it gets if it gets approved, if we get the approval soon, yeah. So it, okay, so that's what you're expecting that it that it it moves quickly and that it could go out of this year's budget. Okay. It, it, so I don't. <clears throat> uh, Dan Dan works with us through Millennium, um, 
but Dan or 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 Chief or or Jeff, did did Allison indicate uh, the timing on this, on how quickly or? I, I only know from from other departments when they were awarded the grant, they got the boat the following year. So like Marichal applied this time last year. Okay. Their boat is being built due to be delivered in September. Okay. So I don't know. So I, I guess it's you know, probably not still a year out. So probably be on next year's budget, actually. Mm, that gives us an idea. Yeah, yeah but again, we originally put this on the uh, the prior agenda to talk with the board uh, in advance of us submitting the pre-application to make sure there was uh, sufficient support to move forward with it. Uh, given that we didn't get to it last time, we submitted the paperwork we needed to submit. But now we just want to uh, confirm with the board Right. that there is a, a willingness to uh, fund this item should we be the successful recipient of a grant. So, so you're coming to us because the, the grant has to be filed this week. And if the grant is approved, we we have to expend funds. But Correct. it's not a sure thing, A, that we're going to get the grant. Uh, but you, you don't want to move forward committing the village to spending funds without you know getting an okay from the board. In some Correct. substance, Correct. that's why we're here today. Yes. Correct. Okay, I, I'm fine with moving this forward. Uh, does anybody else have any issues moving this forward? No, this sounds like a great grant opportunity for the village. We'd get a $400,000 boat for 30 or $40,000, mm -hmm. right? I don't have any problems with it. I'm just curious what uh, whether there'd be a, any significant difference in a aluminum, a fiberglass please versus the aluminum. Was that ever investigated? I'm just curious. Jeff, you're muted. Jeff, you're muted, buddy. Hi, what was that, Dan? I'm curious whether we investigated the police boat that was a fiberglass hull as opposed to an aluminum hull and whether there was any substantial difference in cost. To apply for this grant, the, the boat has to meet certain criteria. No fiberglass boat would meet the criteria, such as like sea burn capabilities and, and other things. So that's why... They, they okay. kind of geared everything towards aluminum boats because they're the only ones that can meet sea burn and all that other stuff. Okay. So, okay. So, the you. so the application, you have to specify, you specify a specific boat that fits their parameters. Right. It's not like, it's not a one-off. It just gets modified, but it's, it it's a boat that somebody builds. We're going in line with what the county bought and what the county did under these grants mm -hmm. so that when we cross train, you can we're kind of all familiar with the boats. We'll all generally have the same boat, you know, yeah. so that we can all, you know, just jump on, you know, each other's boats and, and help each other out and kind of know, know the boat, know the handling characteristics and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's great. When did you start uh, looking at this? Uh, I started looking at this last year, but then COVID happened and then it kind of got put on the back burner. So now we're on the fun. All right. Uh, Super. Thank you. I, I don't hear any objection to moving forward with it. So uh, good luck with the grant. Well, let me give you a blessing there. There you go. Thank go you. and sit no more. Uh, thank you, Jeff LaRusa. Thank you, uh, Chief DeRusa. Uh, thank you all for all you do. And good luck getting the grant. Thank you. We'll keep you posted. Appreciate it. The next item on the agenda uh, that we have a village employee here for is we got uh, music from Big Pink there. Uh, Mr. Achiavelli uh, <laughs> in his pink office. Uh, the Mimaric Waste Transfer Station roof. Tony, you want to tell us about that? Um, over our transfer station where we bring our garbage trucks to dump the garbage, the recyclables, the newspaper, the cardboard, yard waste, everything that we haul out of the village goes into this um, transfer station, goes into a compactor and gets pushed into 75 yard trailers. Uh, approximately five years ago, uh, the building that used to house this uh, compactor was taken down. It was in, uh, it was getting in bad shape. It was all concrete and the village engineer at the time 
decided you know he was going to take it down and then rebuild another butler building a metal building over top of the compactor uh which as of today still hasn't been built um and we we just put the uh, compactor in there it was $150,000 we did it about 6 years ago and it should last us 30 years plus but with the weather getting into it we're not going to get maybe 15 years out of it it's going to be destroyed plus the the truck floor that we drive on is going to be destroyed because the weather is getting to it the ice and snow it's breaking it up the concrete it's not safe right now it's it's we're gonna have a problem with it if we don't get it enclosed um if we have to shut down the dump i not sure what we're going to do. We can, you know, short term, we'll be able to make arrangements, but long term, which it would take to rebuild what we have there, we're going to have a problem hauling our garbage and uh, all of the products that we, we pull out of the village. Okay, Tony, just, just for folks that are watching, what happens is, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, our garbage trucks empties into, uh, empty into this compactor. The compactor is then loaded on a tractor, and the tractor then goes to the county transfer station. Yeah, but it, the, the, the trucks dump into a hopper, they call it, and the compactor pushes it into the back of a trailer. And it compacts 25 yards of, or 75 yards of whatever item you're using. So if you're putting, um, we can put 120 yards of uh, garbage into a 75 yard trailer because it's compacted. Then we take it and we haul it to a county uh, site and then the county handles it from there. Um, that's one tractor trailer with the haul two, two and a half garbage trucks loaded up with material. And we have five garbage trucks out there picking up material every day. Did, did there used to be an incinerator down there? Excuse me? Did there used to be an incinerator? Yes, yes. The incinerator is under the um, the floor that uh, we're driving on top of right now. I'm, I'm familiar with those. My father worked for the New York City Department of Sanitation. He drove a crane that loaded the garbage into the incinerator. And he used to take me down uh, to uh, the uh, plant every once in a while. Tender memories of garbage. Tony, um, I killed the old guy. Is the um, the butler shed that you're um, asking for? Is that going over the entire ramp, or just the ramp up near where the compactor is? Just the uh, the floor of where the compactor is, and it would be on the outside of the existing uh, frame. So if anything wanted to be done on that floor, or if we wanted to add another compactor, we could do it under the confines of the uh, the new Butler building. We wouldn't wouldn't we would not have to change anything at that point. Okay. Tony, can I ask a, a couple of questions? Sure. sure. The, the, of course, it's very important and serious topic. Can you break it down in you know what what what's what next steps and 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 the cost steps cost timing I know engineering is involved I know you have you you have scope to work but but just can you break it down in simple format how how long what steps are needed how long does it take and what's the total cost estimate Well we're not sure of the total cost yet because the engineers are working on getting uh, prices on doing the uh, footings the, the size of the building that we need and um, everything that would be included. I believe uh, there's a, estimates from the engineer, from the engineer company now that we have the consulting to get the prices that we need. That's kind of what I'm getting. Is this is this do you need more? There's kind of one engineer looking at this uh, from what what needs to be done and the pieces and then there's another consulting firm is 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 that all we need are we going to get more kind of what is i see I, I see the pieces here but i don't see it all put together can 
If you could help us, that would be great between you and or Jerry. How do you see this moving? Jerry, unmute yourself. Jerry, you're muted. You're muted. Tony's been working, I'm sorry, Victor. Uh, Tony's been working with the engineers um, since we went to a, a consulting engineer. So it's been some time now. It's probably this time last year or, or June or July of, of last year to try to get this building um, designed. Obviously there's some uh, requirements when you're putting a building like this up that we wanted to make sure that our consulting engineer was managing all those proposals. So he brought in other professionals in order to get us to where we need to be to spec out this building. As far as the cost of the building, I don't know what that's going to be. On the low side, I believe it's going to be 50 to 60,000. On the high side, potentially 100,000. Right. Okay. But um, we have all the estimates that, uh, from, that have been developed from all the conversations that Tony has had, on site meetings, et cetera with our consulting engineer to try to get us to a point where we have to now um, develop a, a design and spec for this building. That's where we are. And that's 62. I think it's 62,000 right now. But now for, for the engineering is 16,000, 16? 62 total for all those professionals who- uh, Six, 16,800, 16,800? No, actually I added all of the professionals quotes together. And it was 62,000, if I can recall, when I prepared for the meeting. I don't have those notes in front of me. Is that in a separate email? No, it's, it should be all in the backup. It is in the backup. Yeah, of all the individuals that would be working on this project that our consulting engineer needed to bring in to deal with, to deal with uh, design, to deal with load specs, I'll pull it up now. I just, I have my agenda. Yeah, in where's order. the total? I didn't put a total. I think the total was in the email when I presented the email. <laughs> what is this? Yeah, I, mean, I think. Um, to be. Not in the backup. Yeah. To be, right? Yeah, I got it here. Yeah. So the building's 40 by 80. We have structural design services. We have we have uh, subsoil and foundation investigation. We have our consulting engineers' time estimates and proposal from Keller Sessions. And then we have one more, I think. Hold on, let me grab it. Yeah, so structural. And, from we have, and then we have process, electrical yeah. engineering services. So basically, we have compiled a list of professionals that would um, complete this project for us without the cost of the project, you know, without the cost of the building itself. I understand. But, it, but that was not in the back of that summary, correct? That's what I was trying to get to. The summary is not, it's, it's not, it was the individuals. And my email. I don't know if Dan put my email in the backup. I I, I did not. I just put the uh, okay. Uh, the individual. You say email. I'll, I'll try. I'll trace it. When was it from? No, actually, the email. Uh, email it to me. Is, email it to me. That's okay. Yeah, just resend it. Send it to you. We'll yeah, send it. I, I attached the uh, April thirteenth email, with, in which um, Keller Sessions transmitted the various uh, sub uh, proposals to you, Jerry. Very good. I'll get it there. So as far as uh, if I could just turn it over to Tony, Tony and I spoke about this uh, principally after her nanny left or, or um, yeah, right after her nanny left. And his concern is the replacement of the compactor. Uh, in order for us to try to give the compactor some extended life. Now, I don't know, and maybe Tony knows, what was the cost of that compactor when we purchased it a while ago? Uh, 150,000. Right. So this would prematurely destroy the compactor, which of course, you know, works 
very hard for us because of the amount of garbage that we uh, collect and extend the life of that. Um, and, and it's also a safety concern for the workers who have to work there in the rain and the right. sun. And, and, and that's what Tony should talk about too as well, right? Right. Well, I think actually on the need and the, and the issue, I, it's well understood. My question was the backup. Uh, and kind of what what are we approving again? What what are what are the, what's the time frame? What are we doing today? It would it would be to move forward with the engineer's proposals to get this project off the ground because right now, Calum sessions in discussion. Yeah, it's just in discussion mode right now. There's so, no, there's no. Sorry, just to finish. Sorry, Dan. This one doesn't have an estimate. The Keller sessions uh, in the backup. Maybe it's in the email, but. So that you know, what's the estimate of what we're approving today? Uh, the final page of the Kellard uh, proposal, which is page seven, shows uh, costs for various phases. Okay. So base mapping, 1,200. Site plan mm -hmm. phase, 7,100. Uh, uh, local and county stream permits, 4,200. Floodplain development permit, 3,200. Application phase, yeah, it's... They're very, the only one that's not identified is the, they say TNM for uh, construction phase, which I imagine is for construction. That's on page seven of the college session. Correct, yes, I have it here. That's why I'm asking. So what that's, you're, you're but, asking us to move forward with this and to actually, I think a resolution we're, for next? That we're, we're asking to move forward in the design uh, okay. phases. We could approve like an up to up to if we add all this up, prepare yeah. a resolution and uh, add and put a little margin. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right, Dan, please find that. If I understood you correct, Jerry, you're telling us that the total the total package to get to a design to build is roughly sixty two thousand dollars. That's correct. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. And I understand that, and I understand the breakdown. I'm curious as to whether we would be better served by going to a, one or two other firms uh, for estimates, uh, you know, where they have maybe in-house capabilities rather than having to have the various subsections, uh, only because what you're telling us is the building is going to be between 40 and 100 or plus thousand dollars. Yeah. If you take the high side of a hundred thousand, you know, sixty-two percent of that is the cost of the you know engineering. Yeah. Um, you know, and which is, I understand the it, what has to be done. I'm not sure that I agree with some of the things, but uh, that those are minor. Um, you know, in the breakdown, you have seventy-two hundred for site plan approval, which is not required by the village. Uh, mm -hmm. You are, you are required to get the stream, the stream permits, et cetera. <clears throat> Those kinds of permits, correct. You know, so uh, there, there is, there are things that could be modified, but I guess it, I'm not worried about the, you know, the, nit, the nitpicking of the thing. What I'm concerned about is, you know, um, sometimes we have firms that we are comfortable with, but maybe not have the capability until so we end up paying, you know, more. Um, and I'm just wondering whether or not this may be one of the cases. Color sections may not be the right firm, you know, for it, and maybe we can do a lot better. I mean, that sixty-two thousand dollars for a hundred thousand dollar building um, is very, very costly. And I'm not minimizing the need. I went down today, um, you know, uh, with a very open mind and uh, uh, saw the conditions and saw the issues, and I understand the issues uh, dramatically. Um, you know, and something needs to be done. I wish we had some alternatives that we could do a long, you know, a much better project, even if it was more money that would give us a much, you know, much more flexibility for the future, because this still leaves us vulnerable for the future, even with, you know, with the uh, thing, you know, with the cover. But I understand the need for it, but I'm just concerned about the soft costs being as high as they are. And, yeah, you know, that is I, I will agree with you that the soft costs are high. Um, I could do a search for a firm that would provide everything, including um, electrical design, um, foundation, and the, the structural uh, soil design, and then the structural design, uh, as well as the permitting part of it, which is what the consulting engineer basically would do. 
we could try to do that, but I'm not, I would have to rely on Steph. I would have to rely on Dan or, or Tony to potentially identify or remember who we may have used in the past for certain large projects like that, because I'm not familiar with, uh, with pulling those names, uh, you know, out of the air. Yeah. Uh, and I understand, and you know, calling several municipalities. I mean, Connecticut has bu is building lots of these types of structures uh, for you know, municipalities uh, for not necessarily exact, you know, oranges to oranges, but you know, in the same fruit family, if you will. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, the the costs that I have seen for things, I, I don't know that remember the names because I don't remember when they were done uh, were nowhere near the percentage that we have for the whole thing. And many times, if you call Butler, they can steer you to people who may be able to be helpful. And if, they, if it takes us you know, 30 or 60 days and we can save a significant amount of money, it's worth it in, in my mind. Tony, this, um, Tony, I, I'd like to hear from him because yeah, he's in, he was intimately involved in preparing well, not preparing, but the conversations with the engineer and where we are today. I just don't want to go ahead, Tony, if you could. Well, I mean, the engineers, they've been out here several times um, with the other uh, sub engineers that they've brought in to look at the building, look at the facility. Um, I'm not sure if you're going to get anything, you know, much cheaper. Every, you know, the engineers are all specific type of engineering, you got your structural, you got your electrical, you got your mechanical. Um, we might be able to reach out to Butler and but Butler will not do the electrical. They won't do the um, search on the rivers and that those kind of permits, but they can do the soil, you know, um, compaction testing and stuff like that. I think the engineers that Jerry's brought in are, are gonna do probably the right job without going backwards. I really do. We've been working on this quite a while. Over a year between between uh, meetings and, and trying to get it to where we are right now. Um, um, yeah, honestly, we have experience with Callard. Uh, I think we've used Carlin Simpson in the past. I can't recall for what. Uh, I know we, we've used uh, Macri Grossfield. They did uh, uh, some analysis of some uh, structures in the village for us. Um, not sure yeah. about uh, OLA, but uh, we've used I think, Dolph, uh, Dolph Rodfeld Engineering. Um, yeah. Well, you know, what? I mean, my, my personal preference would be not not to second guess the staff that's been working on this for over a year, and to try and move. Uh, in an expedited fashion because it's been forever. Uh, it should have been done uh, when they took down the old building. And yeah. you know, I, I don't think there's going to be a firm that's going to be able to do all of this uh, under one roof. Uh, I know it's a, a lot of money, but you know, it, it, sometimes you just got to pull the trigger and uh, allow your staff to do their jobs. So I'd be interested in what everybody else thinks. You took the words right out of my mouth, Tom. That's exactly what I was thinking. You know, I, I don't think this is the time to start over. We have heard that there is an urgency to this. There's a lot of work that's gone into it. And to I just to substitute our judgment is, is I just don't think it's appropriate at this juncture at all. And, and I don't think there's a reason to substitute our judgment. I don't think there's a, there's just not anyway. Anybody else? Nora? I mean, I, I think it's something that that we need to do. And um, I'm sorry it's taken this long. I think staff may have wanted to do this a long time ago and just didn't get the opportunity to present it. It wasn't. Uh... It wasn't, it wasn't between, in the, in the beginning, the first 10, 12 months, it wasn't between me and Tony. 
and when Tony and I started to meet on this project, you know, we're, we're, we're building this to try to save some equipment and extend the life of existing equipment. Um, it's also difficult for our employees to work in uh, the open environment because, you know, we have to collect during inclement weather, um, no matter what. So, um, yeah, my sense is that that staff might have liked to have had this a few years ago. So I'm just sorry that it's taken this long. I got that impression from Tony, that's for sure. That we should have done this a while ago, but we're catching up now on some projects that have been, you know, hanging around maybe a little too long. And um, what I can try to do is um, to make it more palatable is see if I can't have a discussion with each one of these firms to see if I, you know, can bring down, down that number um, a little bit, which is something that we do anyway. Um, I can do that as far as I think that that's a good, a good policy. Yeah. As far as starting over, I'm, I'm kind of concerned by that, but look, it's not, you know, it's not the building over the manager's office at village hall. It's the building over Tony's compactor. So it's, 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 you know, and you know, over the you know, many uh, workers who have to deal with that every day. Yeah. I don't have to. You're right. We're good. Victor? Because uh, as a as a procurement policy or, or a policy matter, these are two service contracts that you're kind of putting together. It's a as long as you as you are, you know, focusing on, on keeping them, you know, under under our, our policies and and keep ha getting a grip, keeping the grip on them. Um, I don't think there's a reason to start again, but I as as because we we're not actually we we are in compliance with 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 our with our with our policy uh, because it's services contract, right? Yeah. So, so, but, so the, the key, the key is to finish this process properly. And then, then we'll see how the other bit goes, right? Th th it, then that will have to go out. That's right. But if it was a $15,000, you know, design, uh, you know, we'd have a quick conversation. This is in excess of $60,000 for some, for some engineering and, and other investigative work. So it's, it's a, uh, it's at board level, that's for sure, Victor. In my so opinion. Jerry, can you can you see if you can work them over? Yeah, I can work them over. And then we'll try to, and I'll report back to a, a number that we, uh, you know, that we achieve. Okay. Dan has his hand up. I just want to make sure that it's known that I'm not against the project, and I'm not suggesting going no. in a different direction, and uh, I certainly am not second guessing Steph. Uh, you know, approach to life. Um, but I am concerned about uh, the costs. Um, and I think, you know, if you take a look at it, it's $160,000 to save $160,000 or $150,000 machine, which I don't minimize. Um, that is of less importance to me and doesn't make sense economically, but the safety of the workers does make sense to me. Uh, I was down there and I understand it. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not opposed to the project, and actually I think that something needs to be done. But it seems to me, uh, I've just never seen engineering projects all in for, with all investigation, being, you know, basically between 60 to 120 percent, you know, of the, of the actual construction. It just, it, it's out of sight and out of line. You know, and I don't know if anything can be done or not, but there are companies that do specialize in these types of things. Uh, and maybe there are, you know, with a couple of quick phone calls, we can find out if there are any, if there are any, it's yeah, worth a phone it. call to them. And if it isn't worth it, if we can, okay, we, trying we, to get we, the we, others down is certainly a desirable approach. Okay, we, we have a council consensus of moving forward. Jerry knows what to do. Uh, thank you, Tony, uh, from appearing from your lovely yeah. office no problem and uh thank you for uh, bringing this to our attention and hopefully we'll we'll get uh the structure up post haste all right thanks okay, good night we'll appreciate it okay now left up uh we have uh the harbor island crew jeff larusa uh jeff on and jason pinto 
And gentlemen, you want to talk to us about the Gundam Bowl. Mr. Pinto, why don't you start? Hi, Mayor and Board. Thanks for having me. So, um, as you all know, we have a, a gunder boom at the beach that um, was put in in uh, 98, the first one. And then I believe in 2002, there was some oil spill and uh, we got another one put in. Um, and that has, uh, from 2009 on, we've been dealing with the same boom. Uh, the boom has reached its end of life probably years and years ago. Um, it's in really rough shape. Um, it has gaping holes and uh, my colleagues, maintenance colleagues can talk about the structural issues, but it has numerous structural issues. Um, so we reached out um, to um, the original folks that work with us to install the boom, to try to get a gauge on what kind of options we had. Um, so they gave us three options, um, one being maintenance and repair, uh, number two to replace, and number three would be to remove uh, maintenance and repair was uh, quite a bit of money uh, for something that might not even work um, because of the extent of the damage. So we we uh, we passed over that option. The replacement we got a cost from anywhere from two hundred fifty thousand to about uh, three hundred and change. Um, so a uh, very expensive uh, piece of equipment to put back in. Um, and then there's a the removal option. Um, which is somewhere around 25,000, uh, majority of which are uh, disposal costs or to remove the, the boom and throw it away. Um, so staff um, has done some research into water quality and um, the memo I provided that we did in November um, provides uh, 2018, 19 and 20 water quality, both from Save the Sound and uh, the Westchester County Department of Health. Um, and uh, we provided that data as backup on here. Um, the majority of time when the beach closes is due to rain, over a half inch of rain is, uh, since I've been here, that's been the, the, the process. Uh, regardless of whether the water's tested or not, we have to close. Uh, the county just, that's just the rule. Um, so um, the boom we feel would, would because of its structural integrity is not doing much to make improve on the water quality. It has gaping holes. I don't know if anyone's ever seen it. Um, so we feel that whether the, the water inside the boom and outside the boom is very similar in quality. I think the testing shows it. Um, the Department of Health, um, when we spoke with them, said the, uh, the same thing. Mark Bota said the same thing in terms of the water quality over the last five years is very similar inside, very similar outside. And that's mainly due to its structural integrity. It's not filtering the, the water like it used to uh, because of its age. Um, so right now it's pretty much just like a floating eyesore. That's what I akin it to. Um, um, it just floats out there. It doesn't do much. Um, and I think that shows by the water quality. Um, so staff has uh, been working for number of number of months. Uh, to try to come up with some data and uh, a plan to, to get rid of it um, in-house um, if the board so desires. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so it, it, we, we take it out, uh, we take the mushrooms out, right, because it's angered with mushrooms, right? Yeah, Jeff um, could probably answer how it would come out. I know Jeff, Tony, and the other Jeff on have been working to come up with a plan uh, to remove it, which is more their forte. So the, the mushrooms would be disconnected and marked. Um, I believe there's roughly 50 of them that are out there. Um, so the, the diver would go down, disconnect the ones that, you know, he disconnects, mark those mushrooms. And then some of those are going to be used to hold swim lines. So then we would, we would just relocate them as to wherever Jason needs them to hold the swim lines and to also mark the drop off. Um, and then eventually, if you wanted to make swimming docks and put swimming docks out, we could use those mushrooms to anchor the swimming docks in place. You know, if, you know, that, that whatever something that you wanted to do. And then whichever ones aren't used would have to be removed. Okay. But some of them would be reused for other purposes. Okay. 
So the, 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 even the ones that are taken out will be put, put to use. Yes. And just, just for uh, clarification, the Gundaboom, as it extends in the semicircle, the uh, the furthest, furthest, furthest extent of the semicircle does not mark the end of swimming. The end of swimming stops way before that, right? Uh, the, the, don't you put ropes that... Yeah, so um, Mayor, we have a designated swim area that, that we um, put on a map for Westchester County. Uh, so the Gunderboom itself, the, the entire half moon, I guess you would call it, or half circle, is technically swim. You can swim in there. Um, but what we would have to do if the boom came out is I would have to work with Jeff to define a swim area um, because we have to. You can't just let people swim in an open body right. of water without it being defined. So that's why we would strategically place the mushroom anchors so that way we can have a dedicated swim area um, where kayakers and boaters and everyone else would know that that's for the beach. Okay. Anybody have any questions or concerns for staff? Mr. Natchez? Uh, when you said you couldn't relocate uh, some of the anchors, uh, mushroom anchors to hold the swim docks, what holds the swim docks now? Right now, there are no swim docks there because no. of the gunder. We, those anchors uh, are holding the, the gunder boom. So if they wanted to put a swim dock out there, you know, we can pick those anchors up and reuse those to hold the swim dock if, you know. Okay, so you're talking about if we if we expand the program and put swim right, dock. Right, in the future, that's all. I understand. Also, the, the, that, I spoke to the diver um, about this back in November, and he dove on it about three years ago, I guess, um, to do like an inspection. And the curtain under the water, I mean, the, the, the top of it that's, you could see is bad, but the curtain that's under the water is, is most of it's not, not there anymore. It's got holes in it. It's shredded. It's so it's really not doing much at all. It's harbor junk. I like to call it right now. It's like space junk and space came down. It's like harbor junk. It's just sitting there, <laughs> not doing much. It really is. What are you looking at? I mean, it's it whether or not we put a new gunder boom in we have to spend this money to remove the current one. So it isn't as if we're spending money that, that would be wasteful in the future because we don't have to move the mushrooms. We can just, you know, cite them. So it just That's seems to me that the Gunderworth, the Gunder boom at this time isn't helping the swim program or keeping the beach area cleaner. And it seems to be more of um, a potential liability than an asset right now. Even during the height of the Gundaboom, when the Gundaboom was uh, very effective and very new, when it rained over half an inch, they still closed the beach. I mean, that, as, as Jason pointed out before, that's just was just the county policy. Right, and, and and I mean, years ago they did they did test inside and out, but that the county's not doing that kind of testing now, so we don't have that data. Okay, anybody just, else have any? Well, I just want to thank you for, for you know, putting this rationale together and, and, and be ready to move forward. I, I'm okay with it. Thank you. Okay, it's on for a regular meeting, right? Thanks. Yes, it is. Yes. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Mayor Board. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. LaRusso. Thank you, Tony Accavelli. Thank you, Mr. Ahn. Thank you, thank Mr. You. Have a good night. Have a good night, everybody. Mayor. Yes. We have Jefferson Avenue basketball court. I don't necessarily need parks and rec staff, but I don't know if you wanted to talk about it or not. All right. Okay. Is that on for tonight? Yes. Yes, it is. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, Jefferson yep. Avenue basketball court. We we we, we took down the uh, backboard and the rim during COVID, and then we found out that it really was unserviceable. Is, is that correct, Mr. Yes. Allen? Yes, Mayor, that's correct. We took down the, the hoop in the backboard and in the process of taking it down, uh, a couple pieces broke. And uh, we came to learn that there's no replacement backboard for that kind of system. So we, we uh, are gonna take money out of the uh, 
the fund that uh, was paid for by developers. Yeah, the trust. To, uh, do this work. Mm -hmm. And of course, the village $7,000 out of that fund, of which there's 400 plus thousand dollars. Yes, the new pole, rim, backboard, and the rehabilitation of the basketball surface as well. And okay. by the way, Mayor, we own the, we already have it in the parks garage. We bought the rim and new backboard. We just need it professionally installed. So that's, and the court, but we already own the rim. It's already purchased. Okay. So this is just for the, the prep work and all that. Yeah, this is for the contractor work to, to do the paint work and install the, install it to code. Sounds like a good use of that money. Uh, Mr. Natchez? Just curious, why is it $5,000 to put the backboard in? To set the new pole? Well, we're, we're taking out the, if, you, if you've seen it, there's a big rusty pole that has a bent on it. We're taking that out and we're putting a whole new system in, a whole new pole, backboard rim, um, the whole thing. So they got a cement and, and all that. Then they're redoing the surface of the court. And the surface, correct. Patching holes and repainting. It's going to look really nice and new. No, I understand the patching holes in the painting, which was $2,500. It just seemed that the, the putting the pole in is $5,000. Yeah, and we're, you know, we're subject to prevailing wage. So sometimes those kinds of costs, I agree with you, they look high, but they have to pay prevailing wage when they work for us. This actually, Jason, did you talk to him about this? This might be under the threshold. I don't know. What um, the, I thought the threshold we was. Yeah. We, we did not talk to him about that. Um, but we got three quotes on the project and this was the cheapest. Okay, good. Um, yeah. Okay. Does anybody have any problems with this being on a regular agenda? No. It's, it, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I have no problem. Thank you. Did this go to the Parks and Recreation Commission? Yes, we talked about it last meeting. But just to be clear, the Parks and Recreation Commission doesn't approve projects like this in the village parks. When we're repairing something or replacing something, they don't get a veto over that. Not a question of veto or approval. It's a question of their you know, recommendation one way or the other. That's important that we have we have yeah. committees that are have responsibilities. You know, we should this be is part of their responsibility is my point. Uh, having no. served in that committee, I, I know it's not. They technically are supposed to be recommending recreation programs and facilities for us. Right, and this, this, this is, is, and this, this, this is, is a repair of an existing facility. Exactly, that's my point. Restoration, yeah. Uh, there's one more item that's on for the regular meeting. Uh, so let, let's knock that off. Uh, this, so everybody's fine with this going on. We'll, we'll approve this tonight. Uh, for the regular meeting, the last item is to execute New York State Equitable Business Opportunities EBO system under agreement on for regular meeting. Uh, who wants to explain that? That seems like a yeah. thing. Yeah, you know, I'll do that. It, it's, um, it's a, uh, uh, it's a equal uh, employment uh, uh, system or equitable business system that the state uh, maintains for uh, contractors or people who are, have uh, federal, or sorry, uh, their uh, grants for bridge projects. So we just need to uh, have this agreement in place so we can have a uh, report on our contractors to the state as part of the Hillside Avenue Bridge Project. Is there a cost associated with this? Uh, I don't believe so. I, I, I can check the agreement again, but uh, I there think was it was gratis. nothing in the backup or your memo. Yeah, I, I think I think it's gratis. It's, it's just a reporting system that uh, in order for us to sign up for requires a municipal resolution. Right, that's right. Uh, that's Kelly has a question. Hey, you know what? I don't have a question. I just want to, to let you know that I need to sign off. So goodbye. Thank you all. Bye, Kelly. Good night, Kelly. Anybody else? All right. We'll be on for the regular meeting. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now let's go to the executive session. Thank you all for working in through that in a nice fashion. 
<clears throat> there's two items on the executive session. Or well, did we add a third? Yeah. We added a third, right? Yeah, we added a third. We added we added the uh, the PBA proposal. Discuss contract negotiation with PBA. Hold on. It's Tom. I'd like to also add the village attorney uh, and an update on Hampshire. You know what, Dan? I, 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 that's fine, but I wish you would do this, you know, in, in a fashion where you, you let people know beforehand. Well, I have to say, I agree with both those things, and I'm sorry I was I was occupied today with an emergency, and Friday too, um, and so yeah. I I, but we've gotten a lot of information about Hampshire today, and I think we need to discuss both those things. Much as I am loath to add to our executive session, because this is the sixth meeting I've tried to make sure we did our executive sessions in a more efficient manner. But nonetheless, I would second that motion that Dan made. Yeah, well, I just, I, I, I have no problem with discussing them. I, I would just, you know, I hate adding things 10 seconds before we go in. Well, and I don't love getting things to on the day of a meeting either. You know, I mean, that happens. It's just, it's hard to keep, it's hard okay. to keep up with yeah. stuff that comes in you know, uh -huh. an hour or two hours before a meeting. I had, I had one one item, which is the uh, the ABC litigation. Uh, we, we don't have, I just want to follow up quickly uh, a discussion with our, with our village manager to see where we are, et cetera. Actually, Victor, we won't have a quorum to do that. Can we just discuss it? I know we can't take any actions. I don't know. Can 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 you discuss something without a quorum? I mean, it's I guess that uh, with regard to ABC, it would be a conversation with the mayor and trustee to four, right? And our manager. And the manager. But to vote to go into executive session to discuss that, you need three votes. That's correct. That's my point. But I have no problem talking about it, but it's just, do you, you see where I'm going with this? I have a question. Yeah. I mean, is there any reason I can't vote for to go into an executive session I'm not going into? Yes. I, I'm, I'm not asking you, I'm asking Bob. Okay. Yeah, I, I, if you're recused, you're recused. So, you, so when so basically when we're going into executive session we should have individual votes for everything or can we just go and say i'm voting to go into executive session but i'm recused from this other matter well i think we can handle it the way we did the abstract right so that you don't require multiple votes right as as there are there are three votes to go into executive session on each item but you would also you would also have to disclose at the time of the vote on executive session that you had, a, you had to reduce. I think there's there's an easy way to deal with the ABC property. It's a litigation. It's important for the village. There, because it's in litigation, there be, I think there's time time sensitive issues. I don't know where we are, and as a trustee, I would like to know if our attorneys on top of things, what is going to happen. So, um, uh, please, Jerry, if you can set up and colleagues. Uh, to, uh, Please, Mayor, and I know Kelly is out, but you know, we it, it, it would have been two minutes just to 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 set this up so that we know what's going on uh, because uh, it's not on on, on Bob's uh, docket anymore. So we 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 just need to figure out a way of of, of knowing what's happening. So I leave it in your hands, uh, Jerry. Please help us uh, get to it. Because I think there are some deadlines. I don't want to be, you know, as a trustee, I want to, I don't want to be, be, be uh, just sitting and, and maybe having uh, so, some legal uh, um, yeah. deadline come come and go, and and uh, we haven't asked about it. So that, that's my concern. Well, how, how, about, I, if we, how about if we have uh, Mr. Spolzino send a memo to the three people who are not recused, explaining where we are. But he's, he's because he's, he's I don't know he's where he doesn't know with the two lawsuits. May, may I make a suggestion? 
I think Jerry can have a, a conference call with uh, the mayor and uh, trustee for um, tomorrow morning and bring you up to date. You can have two. You can have a. You have a. You can have a conversation to uh, yeah. two members of the board. It's not a meeting. Thank you. I think that's. I'm not saying anything here right now, though. So. Oh, no. Whenever we Nobody's talk. Nobody's asking we talk. you to. <laughs> but whenever, whenever we talk, we talk. But uh, of course, you know, we could have a conference call at any time. But I'm not going to say anything now. So I'm just going to let you know. Well, I, I just so, so let's just play it simple. Uh, Jerry, I know you just came, you know, got getting your hands on a lot of things, and, and the first time we, you know, we, we haven't even greeted ourselves because we just went straight. I, good to see you. Uh, my, my point is, whenever, uh, sometime this week, just please uh, follow up and we'll figure out if Kelly's available. If not, with the mayor, we can talk. Well, just remember that if Kelly's available, the three of you, yeah, do something. Well, the, yeah, that, that, that's why I'm back, putting it back to him, whether he, you know, because I don't want to just single out Kelly. My point is, just 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 he just just, just brief us where we are or find a way. Hey, Jared, call us. Send, us some, send us an email if somebody has questions. They'll call you. I will provide. I will provide the three board members uh, a memo telling you where we are. I'll do it that way. And if you have questions, you can call me up. Just call me. All right. Does that work? That'll work. That works, yeah. I mean, if we need to see if there's, there's a deci imminent decision, whatever, then we'll we'll, we'll proceed. I'll, I'll have the, the memo. I'll have the memo out by Wednesday night, by Wednesday afternoon. All good. right. Okay. Done. Okay, that's taken care of. Thank you. Good. Thank you. All right. All right. I'll read off the uh, five uh, okay. Regarding regarding parking spot forty one. It is anticipated that a motion will be offered to enter into executive session uh, to discuss matters related to the acquisition, sale, lease of real property, and the publicity would substantially affect the value thereof. Uh, village manager performance review. It is anticipated that a motion will be offered to go into second executive session pursuant to blah, 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 officer's law as it relates to the medical financial uh, credit or employment history of a particular person in the village manager's office. Uh, item number C, to discuss uh, contract negotiations with the PBA. Uh, item number D, or letter D, item letter D, uh, to discuss uh, the Hampshire litigation, Hampshire versus the uh, Village of Mamaric Planning Board and the Village of Mamaric. And the last item <clears throat> is uh, item number E to discuss uh, the hiring of a village attorney. I will make all those motions. Second. Augustino. Trustees Lucas? Yes. Sanchez? Yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Okay, I'll see you in executive session. Augie, this time down here.
I can't wait for him. All right, uh, we, we have come out of executive session. Um, I need a motion to end the work session. So moved. Second. Uh, Augustino, pull the roll. Trustees Lucas? Yes. Trustee Natchez? Yes. Trustee Tafour? It's not here. Mayor Murphy? Aye. All right, I'll see you all in 15 minutes. Okay. I only... Laura Vasami.
All right, Olga. Okay. 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 Good evening. Are we, do, are we broadcasting? We are broadcasting. Okay. Good evening and welcome to the 7.30. We're running a little late. Uh, Village of the Maronic Board of Trustees regular meeting for May 10th, 2021. Please join me in a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Open the meeting. Thank you all. Uh, I need a motion to open this meeting. So moved. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? No nays. Okay. Okay. Uh, begin the meeting tonight with a presentation. Uh, a few months ago, uh, a gentleman who have who had a great impact on his village. Uh, Mr. Keith Yeiser passed away, passed away much too soon. Uh, Mr. Yeiser was a mentor to many. Uh, he was a leader of this community. Uh, he was a family man who leave, left behind uh, many relatives who uh, you know, were very close and he was a very good family man. And there has been a plan afoot uh, by people who loved Mr. Yeiser, both his family, his friends, and people he mentored to do something to honor his memory. And tonight to present uh, the plan that those folks came up with is a, a, a nice gentleman, a Mr. Matt Nagel. And Mr. Nagel, welcome tonight. Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Uh, thank you for uh, organizing this and thank you to everybody who has participated in the planning of this. And I will turn it over to you. And Why don't you uh, give a presentation of what the uh, folks have proposed. Yeah, thank you so much, Mayor Murphy. So, um, evening, I'd like to say peace to you, my brothers and sisters, as Keith would always welcome and greet everybody and also say as a farewell. Um, thank you for, for granting both myself and the Yeiser family this, this audience. Um, my name is Matt Nagel. I am a proud MHS alumni, uh, a friend of Keith and the family, um, and and ultimately, I've been kind of running point in in sort of the months after Keith's passing to try and aggregate and organize all the various people that are are feeling very strongly about doing something in Keith's memory. Um, and so, I'd just like to say a few things about Keith, and then um, kind of dig into where uh, where we'd like to you know propose uh, something for the for the village. So. I never really know where Mamaric begins and Keith Yeiser ends and, and, and vice versa. And, and the, the Yeiser clan is very much Mamaric and Keith was always Mr. Mamaric as, as I believe all of you, you knew him and knew him well. And so the December passing was very much devastating news um, as Mayor Murphy has stated, it was way too soon. Um, and I think for, for Mamaric, I don't know if anyone took more pride in our hometown no one more tirelessly supported it and helped shape it into such an astounding place to live, to grow up. Um, and, you know, Keith was always firstly a family man. And, and honestly, his family was always so gracious in sharing him with us. Um, I don't know how he was always such a good family man and simultaneously ever present and omnipresent at all of our, you know, whether it be school events, plays, athletic events, uh, community events. And, uh, as you all know, he worked with lots of organizations, whether it be both Mamaroneck and Reineck High Schools, Westchester Athletics, the, the former CAP Center, the now Community Resource Center, Habitat for Humanity, Historical Society, 
LMC TV and, and the list is truly endless. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in this exercise and talking to so many people, um, I didn't know how much Keith did um, rather silently and no one really knew. And, and that's the way he kind of preferred it in a lot of ways. And so I joke with my wife that, you know, in some ways he sounds like Paul Bunyan, um, but I promise her that all the stories are, are true. Um, so Keith devoted his life to his family and to public service and, and helping those in need um, of just about anything, whether it be emotional support, financial support, guidance, a meal, a hug. He constantly sought to better people's lives and enrich those lives around him. And he spent an entire career in her life mentoring the kids of, of Larchmont and Mamaronic, and I was one of those kids. Um, and we as humans and we as a community at large need to honor such public service so that it is a beacon for others to emulate uh, a North Star of empathy, kindness, and good deeds, if you will. And he took an interest in every kid who walked through his office door, every kid who donned a Tiger uniform, every kid who walked the halls of MHS, and no child was ever sort of left behind in his life. And so how do you honor that? Um, how do you stand on that giant's shoulders? And I, I would answer, you really can't. It's just really difficult to do, but you try to capture an essence. And so the community has been hurting because of the pandemic. The community certainly didn't need to have that blow in December either. Uh, the, the outcry was just so powerful and loud. Um, so how do we pick up the pieces? And, you know, we all love Keith and we also love Mamaronic. And what would Keith want us to do? And we don't really know, but we assembled a cross section of family and friends, community leaders, longtime residents to consult on what we could do to celebrate uh, Keith's life and Keith's service to the community. And we boiled it down to two main things, which was difficult, but uh, really education and community, which would surprise nobody that, that knew him, right? And so, with education, uh, Brother Yeiser helped countless kids in the Apple program and kids in MHS that weren't necessarily on a traditional path. And he helped countless other kids uh, to get inspired. Um, you know, his own path was not the traditional four year path in terms of starting at Sullivan Community and graduating from New Paltz with his bachelor's. And so he always was very proud and as he should have been to help kids make those steps um, towards that. And so what we have been able to do um, with a lot of coordination between the Mamaronic Larchmont Student Aid Fund um, and the Larchmont League of Women Voters, Joyce Callahan and, and Judy Silverstein have been massively helpful um, to get uh, a, a named scholarship in Keith's name with the Mamaronic Larchmont Student Aid Fund. So we're very happy to address at least that for now part of the education. But the second piece is really community. And this is why we are here tonight. Um, so I know everyone's seen the proposal, it's been circulated, but uh, we respectfully submit a request to build the Keith Yeiser Family Pavilion in Columbus Park. Um, this would not only memorialize Brother Yeiser, but would also be in line with the existing park restoration project that has begun um, with the newly installed swing sets. Uh, Iona College was retained to perform a, a third party survey of residents, which I think some of you have seen, or maybe all of you have seen. Um, and it's also linked in the bottom of the proposal to, and there was overwhelming support to have a place where families could gather in Columbus Park. Um, we have also gone out to the, the Fuller Center um, through Keith's connections with Habitat. Um, they are more than happy to uh, provide the supplies um, and, 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 and help build this thing and all of that stuff down to the beam is in the appendix if anyone really wants to dive in. Um, but of course, we are happy if the village would, would, would be able to uh, put forward some sort of, whether it be labor or anything at all. Um, but that being said, we are prepared to entirely self-fund this project. Um, we founded a Facebook group in the aftermath of uh, Keith's passing um, and currently has 1400 members and everybody's you know, really clamoring to help out and open up their hearts, open up their wallets. Um, so we have that covered as well. So I think in closing, I just wanna thank you all for your consideration in this matter. Uh, we hope that, that you all agree that this pavilion would be a welcomed addition to the park uh, a respectful tribute to a revered man and a beloved community member. Um, and I'm obviously here to answer any and all questions that you may have. Hopefully I've thought of them. Um, and, uh, again, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Nagel. And thank you for getting this together and uh, reaching out to so many people. Uh, I, I think it's a, it's a fitting tribute to Mr. Yazer. Uh, I, I also think that you know, we talk a lot about trying to work in being equitable 
uh, in our community in, in providing services uh, and to think about ways that are equitable to serve uh, people in this community who have been overlooked, people in this community uh, who have lesser means. And uh, I know there's a lot of people in that area and there's a lot of people in Washingtonville in particular that don't have uh, backyards, that don't have places to gather with their family. And I think that this is a step toward providing that and to leveling that playing field. And, and, I, and I think it'll, it'll be put to good purpose by the people of this community if the board decides to uh, go along with it. But uh, you know, it, 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 the, obviously the, uh, the placing and the uh, dimensions need to be hashed out. Uh, but uh, you know, and, and I, I, I think the uh, village manager might have you know help with that. But I'd be you know, myself. I know I've talked to you about this, and it seems like a, a, a good plan. Uh, I don't know what the next step is, but I, I would also would like to ask if there's anybody from the Yiza family who would like to say a few words too. I see that there's uh, folks on the line, so if anybody does want to say anything, you know, feel free in, in the interim. Uh, to put your hand up and you will be called upon. Um, I don't know, does anybody else on the board have any opinions? Somebody have the hand up? Yeah. So yes. Hit, hit, hit whoever yes. has the hand up. I, I have one question. I think, can I? Go ahead, Nora. So I think this is a great idea. I think it's, you know, I think it's just, the, it's just, you know, it, I think, it's something that it just seems so like Keith Yeiser. Um, my concern is we're also talking about the Army Corps plan, and I don't want to see this built and then have it demolished for the Army Corps plan. So that would be important to me in the siting to make sure it's not lost, or if it if you know if if we do the Army Corps plan and Columbus Park is you know that's that's the site of a lot of the work. We would be sure, to, as a part of it, it would be rebuilt. That's my, that was my that's my only worry. A valid word, uh, Mr. Damon Yiza. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Board, and also too for Matt uh, for doing this. You know, as you've been a romantic long enough, my family has been part of romantic for over 140 years. Wow. So we've been around for a while. You, you know, um, mostly with Mermanic and also to it Ryan Eck. So um, we have our, you sit back and say family and friends, you know, dug deep into uh, to the history of Mermanic. Um, as I talk with Matt and it's up to the village manager, um, you know, if this is approved, um, we're looking for certain places where to put it. Now, I know you're talking about the army uh, thing you're talking about, Ms. Lucas. Uh, we wanted, you know, uh, one idea that we did have, you know, it's up to the village manager um, and the placement it is to move it closer to the street where the um, basketball, uh, the, the one, what do you call it, where you had the single basket, uh -huh. cool. uh, yeah. you know, yeah. because that's away from the, away from the river, um, away from the water. And, and uh, I think that would be a nice place if it's possible, because you might have to, you're going to have to, you know, do some uh, work regarding moving the basketball court altogether, that, that section of it. Um, I know you still have a full court basketball court, <clears> there, <throat> but um, that's a place where we looked at it, where it wouldn't really impede, you know, with the center mass um, of the field that's there and also two by where the brook is. Uh, and uh, the mentions that you've seen, I, we talked with Matt, is that it can always be downsized. It doesn't have to be as big as the proposal that, you, that was given to you. So, you know, that's one of the things. And, uh, you know, I would hope that we can come to some type of conclusion to do this. Because, um, you know, my brother was, you know, an iconic person in Mermanic. You know, we use words and we say things, but not because he's my brother, because what he has done. You know, we always say good things about family members, but Keith's legacy speaks for itself. And this would be something that would be like, as Matt said, not only for my brother and our family, it's a legacy that could be for the whole community. Since we were born and raised in Washingtonville, and uh, it's just something that hopefully uh, the board would come to uh, an agreement 
along with the village manager where we can place it at to, to make it suitable for the uh, for the people of Mamaroneck, not just Washingtonville, of Mamaroneck too. I agree, Mr. Yazza, well said. Does anybody else uh, in the audience like to speak on this? Nobody else? Uh, Dan Natchez? Uh, yeah, I think it's a great idea. Um, I'd like the, um, like the Recreation Commission to uh, uh, be part of the um, review of it. Um, we also, are, I think, have to worry about um, if it's a structure we have to conform to FEMA, which there are ways of <clears throat> designing in a way that maybe we can uh, work with that. Victor? I like the concept very much. Let's move forward. Okay, well, why don't we begin uh, moving forward with the village manager and we'll run it by the recreation department. Maybe they'll have a, an idea about where it will be placed. Uh, but I, I think it's safe to say that this is uh, a project that the board is in favor of. Uh, I, I think everything that has been said about Mr. Yaza, both from his brother and from Matt, is very true and more. Uh, he was an icon of this community. He, he, he left a big gap uh, when uh, you know uh, God called him home too quickly. Uh, but you know what? Uh, I think that I think that this would fit his legacy. Uh, I think I think it'll be a, a great place for families to gather, and I think that that would be. You know, I don't know Keith as well as the rest of you, but I think that, that would be important for Keith. Uh, that this would be something that would bring the community <coughs> together, and uh, I, I really appreciate the hard work that's gone into this. So Jerry, uh, would you would you work with the rec department on citing this, and what needs to be done uh, in terms of uh, approvals needed? Yeah. So so uh, Mayor, if I can ask a question. So Matt and, and the Yeiser family, you have a location picked out? Because I think we should have an uh, on-site meeting if that's the case. Yeah, Jerry, so that's the, that's the one question that we really uh, could not answer in advance of this, right? And so um, we don't have that site. We have sites that we think would be preferable, but the reality is, is that I think that the, the rec department and, and the, the town, the, I'm sorry, the village has to opine on that, but that's, that for us is, is you know, we would love for it to be as big as possible and, and, and do all those things. But in the end, um, you know, those are the questions that we cannot answer. So okay. that, that, that we're completely um, malleable on. Sure, that's fine. Well, you know what, Matt, uh, why, why don't we have a meeting someday down in the park with uh, Jerry and sure. Mr. Geyser, uh, whoever else wants to go. And uh, it's, 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 it's all better just to be there sometimes. Yep. Just yeah. The terrain. Yeah, we were doing it in December. It'll be much more desirable in May. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. All right, listen, thank you very much. Thank you for doing this. And uh, thank you all uh, for honoring Keith and to, to Mr. Yaz's family. Thank you for giving him to Mamaronek and uh, for, for all the love that he, he gave throughout this community. It's a really appropriate tribute. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It it uh, it was there was a lot there's a lot of people involved in this and you know there's a lot of things that were batted around and there were some grandiose things that were batted around and in the end you know Keith wasn't looking for something grandiose um, he wants just a place for people to get together and so we're also hoping for you all to know you know in order to sort of keep the scholarship because the scholarship will be the thing that also lives on and be more of a living sleeping eating breathing being that carries on his actual legacy in that sense. Um, we want to get the communities together, um, get the community together there, you know, once a year to, to, to be sort of a fundraiser and have the people across Larson and Marinick that Keith affected and his family to be there. So there's, there's some, there's some plans for this. So I, I, this, 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 I'm elated. So thank you. Matt, while, while I have you here, before you leave, uh, can you just, uh, describe to us how people could donate to the scholarship fund? Yeah. So, um, I, I can, and we're going to do sort of a big splash announcement, but um, the the CRC has been, uh, Durandi Martinez, who I believe many of you know, has been working very closely, and she, again, was someone else who was was very, um, very positively affected by Keith in her adolescence, and so um, they are going to open up a, a an account, an SMA for us at the CRC, 
and we'll be able to sort of donate directly there. Um, and then whatever is left over um, from this, this project will go into the scholarship. So we've, we've, we have those machinations in place, but we'll, we'll sort of create a more formal link to do that. But we were waiting on this meeting until we could. Uh, okay, well, when you have that link, uh, feel free to forward to me and I'll use my social media platform to get it out. Thank you. Thank you. And, have a great uh, evening. Thank you, thank you all so much. Be well. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Have a good night. Bye. You too. Be well. The next item on the agenda is communication to the board. Here's my flyer, Mr. Tibbet. I'm here, Glenn. You're on, Glenn. Good evening, all the board members. Uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome back Jerry. Thank you. It's nice to see you back. And in your honor, hello, lady. <laughs> <laughs> um, just a couple of things. I did see that we um, got our third um, quarter um, sales tax. It did come in uh, above expected, which was very nice. Uh, my question is, for the fourth quarter sales tax, <coughs> do we uh, put two months towards this year's um, budget or do we put three months towards this year's budget? In other words, do we take April and May this year or do we take April, May, June this year? How, just uh, let me know how, how that's broken up towards this year's budget and next year's budget. Do we have two more months we're collecting on this year's budget, April, May? Gotcha. Or for, for uh, purposes, do we collect all three months? Well, can you answer that? Uh, the other thing is, well, yeah, well, 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 I hope that now that before. Jerry's back, we can start to work on a capital budget. I saw in the work session, you did have a few yeah, items yeah. that have come up, and it just emphasizes more that the village is going to need a capital budget because there are a lot of items that need to be spent, and we have to figure out how we're going to prioritize them and how we're going to pay for them. Thank you. Uh, oh, you just answered that question. How does the how does the sales tax break out? We take in the whole quarter, going like three months to the past fiscal year. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Grisella, let's go down in order. Okay. Unmute yourself. Hi. How are you all? Good afternoon. I mean, good evening. <laughs> um, so I, I've called in before. I, I don't think I've, I've gotten an answer, or at least I've got an answer that um, is not very big of an explanation. But I'll take the uh, opportunity that the loop did, um, you know, feature around the Hampshire um, club proceeding with a uh, lawsuit and our village. And, um, you know, my question remains just why there's no room for negotiations before these lawsuits uh, come to, to the table. And, you know, prior calls, I've been told just you can't discuss litigation, you know, anywhere from that. And I, I just, I, I don't think that's a good enough answer when we're continuing to see these tax dollars being spent on um, lawsuits uh, that could be better resourced to some of the things that were already mentioned today. Well, th thank you for your question. Uh, I, I will just answer by saying I saw that uh, story in the loop too, and that was uh, put there by a public relations firm that's hired by Hampshire. Uh, Hampshire has decided to start another lawsuit. Um, I think you can tell the the uh, paucity of uh, you know uh, good legal uh, backing by the number of lawsuits that you actually file. Uh, I, I, I don't think that the village of Mamaronic is in a position where uh, you know, we have to uh, give in to the demands of outside developers who want to change the zoning drastically. They, just a reminder that they had an opportunity to present a plan. The present, plan they presented was for 105 units with no alternative, with no alternative. So they could have presented other alternatives. They could have provided uh, legal reasoning to why those alternatives were not viable. They chose not to do that. They, in essence, went all in. If you've ever watched uh, the poker tournaments, they went all in. And it didn't work out. 
And I believe they went all in because what they really want is they want to change the zoning and they wanted to put pressure upon the village to change the zoning, which they asked to do, uh, to a allow for a, a large development where the clubhouse is. So this is just my opinion, right? But I want to ask the people of this community, where will we be at the end of the day if every time a developer comes into this community and buys a piece of land and then asks the village to change the zoning to fit his needs? Where will we be at the end of that? Now, where yeah. will all of our neighborhoods be? Um, yeah, I think on. around just a little more transparency on how all litigation, right? Like, is there negotiation and to what extent the, the, the board engages or the, the village engages in negotiation with any lawsuit? Because I think, the, you know, the, the, the litigation bills are, are getting pretty high and, and we're concerned. Yeah, I understand your concern, but let me just tell you, historically, they're not as high as they've been in the past. And th there is a, I, I mean, I, I was a trustee uh, at the time when we were spending many, many, many multiples of what we're spending now on litigation. Uh, and we had to pay big settlements. Uh, so if you look at historically what we were spending in the like 07, 08, 06, 05, and what we're spending now, it's much, much less. That doesn't say I think it's a good idea to spend money on litigation, but let, let, let's look at this. People are suing us. We're not suing them. They asked for something. They went through the process. The process was thorough and the process was complete and they had every opportunity to present their case. And that case was not accepted by a, a planning board that worked very, very hard on it. So you know, we have boards and commissions for a reason. You know, uh, do we back them? Or do we not back them? Or do we back away from them at the first sign of trouble, at the first sign of a deep pocket developer who can spend a lot of money and to try and scare the people of this community? And my point is, that is not how you govern, by you know, giving in to people who come in who have no really stake in what goes on in this community after they get what they want, and they'll be gone. So you know, this is a long haul. Might there be some room for accommodation in the future? Possibly. But right now, you know, they keep suing us. And as I've said before, ask them to stop suing us and present a different application. Thank you. Mr. Quiros. Unmute yourself. How about now? I can hear you. Yeah, uh, Mr. Banger, based on your last statement, I think transparency and uh, the sense of morality is required here. We're not, we shouldn't be painting with a white brush here as mm -hmm. all developers. Every development has a unique feature to it. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the last sessions, I was told uh, that lawsuits and litigation were on the website I spent met much time trying to locate them. And you said if they were updated in the litigation and my litigation against you and the village and the police department and some people in there was missing. The Goldstein litigation is missing and the list is not complete. So a, a lot of what you say, you know, um, it's, um, it's up for, and well, now we got to check this out again, only to find out that you're not correct. And it seems that you are protecting uh, Ms. Goldstein by keeping her name out of the website, showing preferential treatment to political donors. And possibly in the first question from, uh, from the other person, you know, there's political and preferential treatment going on because that project uh, you know, does make sense anyway. Uh, it this yeah. requires a lot of tax revenue. So again, the website is wrong. Uh, it's, you know, last time I checked, it wasn't it wasn't updated. The Goldstein unethical uh, mismatch that that's been going on is missing, and there are issues of morality that's going on or lack of morality with the village board. And hopefully this information will be updated. 
Well, first of all, Mr. Quiros, I didn't tell you that the information was on a website. Uh, Sally yes, Roberts did. did. No, the Sally Roberts did. Why, uh, I did. Are you going to throw her under the bus? No, it's just what happened. And you know what? When you say lack of morality, I mean, what are you talking about? I'm talking about what, trying to what, what's, what's, uh, what's the moral? Wait, 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 wait up, wait up. I have a question. What's the moral lapse? The moral transparency is, is the issue of morality. You know, what morality? You, okay, I, if you're hiding things. Tom, no one's hiding anything, like, Mr. Quiros. Okay, it's the information on the website. Uh, Mr. Quiros, it's something, you, you say you can't find it. We'll check that that might or it's might not be website. true. But to, to, I was told that it was not on the website. Mr. Quiros, to allege that that is a moral failing, shows a lack of understanding of morality. That's, that's, when you run the village and the police department and you are being sued and it is being kept undercover and not being exposed, that is a, we're talking about the police department. We're not, we're, we're, we're not talking about anything. We're talking about the police, those that govern and are supposed to protect us equally. Yes, and that's your lawsuit against the police department for whom you work. Thank you. That, that of course I work for it. That's, yeah, yeah, that's, just, the, that's the essence of the lawsuit. I, I've got to be the only, that's the essence of the lawsuit among other things. Of which okay. I worked. Good luck, right. with good luck with your lawsuit. Good uh, luck. Miss good luck with you. You know what do you mean? Good luck. How do you throw this up to good luck? Good luck with your lawsuit. What do you want me to say? I'm not going to discuss your lawsuit. It's not a question of luck. It's a question okay. of ethics. Okay. You have a police department that's never taken any diversity courses and keeps arresting the wrong people. Okay. And proof provided. All right. Next is Miss Roberts. Unmute yourself. Hi, Ms. Roberts. Hi, can you hear me all? Yes, Abby. Yes. Okay, hi everybody. Um, my name is Abby Roberts and I am a resident of 1030 Old Post Road in Mamaroneck and I'm speaking today in my capacity as a resident, not any other capacity. And um, I'm speaking and, and I'm not sure if I was supposed to speak later in the agenda to the community development programs. Is that later or can I speak now about it? It, was, it wasn't clear. Uh, it, 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 that is, that is uh, at the public hearing, uh, but, it, but Abby, if, if you could just also uh, mention uh, what boards and commissions you serve on, just so that that's on a record. Oh, sure, sure. Um, so I'm not speaking tonight in my capacity as a member of the zoning board or in my capacity as the former chair of the traffic commission. Perfect. Thank you. No problem. Um, okay. So it's okay to speak now, not later? Yeah, you can speak now, Abby. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um so I'm, I'm calling in today to just officially ask all of you once again to um, when you're looking at um, community developments for the next three years to please prioritize a sidewalk for Old Post Road. Um, I know you're all aware of this and you're sick of hearing me bang on about it, but I wanted to speak for the public record and just remind you all of some of the key facts again. Um, as you know, Old Post Road is a feeder street, meaning that traffic from all of Orienta flows through it onto Boston Post Road. Um, this is included an increasing amount of foot and bike traffic as a number of families prefer to walk or bike um, to the multiple nearby community schools. Um, in addition to being a feeder for all of Orienta, it's really busy in its own right. We've got apartment buildings, we've got fairway green, and we've got multifamily homes. So I guess the point I'm trying to make is Old Post Road is increasingly dense and populated. I walk up and down it all the time and there are always people walking up and down it all of the time. This is not an empty road. And despite the Oriental Association, I, I also just wanted to point out that it's really not, a, you know, despite being technically in Orienta, it's not, luxurious single family homes here. It's, um, you know, really we've, you know, my husband has been in this community since the 1950s and it's, um, you know, old school Mamaroneck. So, um, so I just wanted to make that point as well. Um, 
In addition, um, you know, one of the reasons so many kids walk to school all the time is that schools um, are in close proximity, right? Um, they're walking to Central Elementary, they're walking to Hummocks, the high school, Liberty Montessori, the French American School, and others. And there's just no sidewalk. And it's really, honestly, it's the only place in the village where there's just literally no sidewalk, not even a bad sidewalk. So I really think it should be prioritized. And I think it, this is really consistent with the structure we've put in place to prioritize safety first, and also our commitment to vision zero uh, to take a pedestrian friendly approach. Um, you know, the, the last couple of issues I wanted to remind everyone of, um, you know, we took that survey, it was 2019 now, so it was a while ago but we had 140 residents participate in this community walking survey. Um, and out of those residents, 63% of them said their choice of travel was impacted by safety concerns. And um, there were like 60 some comments to the survey we took. And uh, a lot of the residents said that even though their uh, travel wasn't impacted by safety concerns, they were still concerned, they were just walking anyway. So, um, you know, I think prioritizing that sidewalk is really consistent with all of the commitments we've made to the community to be a pedestrian first, child first, safety focused first community. Um, so I, I really hope you will consider that. Um, and, you know, right now, uh, you know, I've been told many times throughout the years that putting a sidewalk on Old Post Road is just too expensive. But yeah, we're talking about spending millions and millions and millions of dollars on road repair, repaving, which does none of these things. It does not increase safety. In fact, it actually makes things more dangerous for pedestrians because when you repave a road, you actually increase speeding. So we're talking about millions and millions of dollars for repaving roads, but somehow spending a fraction of that on a much, much needed sidewalk you know, I really think that should be the priority. So that was a bit of a ramble and I apologize, mm -hmm. but um, I hope that you all hear me and just kind of remember all of the many residents who've spoken out about their children's safety um, and just do the right thing for our community. Thank you, Abby. Uh, and I agree with you. I, I, I walk that way a lot because uh, I live close to you. Um, I don't know if this is something that would be uh, to community development block grants uh, usually have to have a neighborhood with a lower or, you know, lower income, but, you know, it's something we could look into. Uh, but I, I think regardless if it's a community development block grant or uh, another expenditure by the village, I, I agree with you that that's, that is a priority. It, 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 you know, if all you have to do is stand over by uh, McDonald's uh, when the kids are going to hummocks in the high school to see how important that street is. Do you want to comment a little bit further, Mayor, or, or not? Say that again, Daniel? Do you, do you want to comment a little bit further on that or, or not at this point? You want me to? Do you want to wait till the... No, I you, can... yeah, wait, if you want, yeah, if you, if you can help Ms. Roberts out. Yeah, so, I mean, you're, you're correct. Uh, the, the project has to be what's known as an LMA, a low mod area. Um, that is that so the neighborhood where uh, Ms. Roberts uh, lives in the uh, Old Post Road is not located in a low mod area. So it won't be a project that we'd be eligible to apply for under the CDBG program. Uh, but uh, I have had co uh, conversations with our uh, traffic engineer, Mr. Carmody from AKRF. Uh, this, there are other grant programs like the transportation alternatives program, other uh, programs like that, uh, that we may be eligible to apply for to uh, build a sidewalk uh, in that area. Um, and just for example, at the I, I live in North Salem and literally around the corner from me, uh, the town of North Salem was able to get a grant to build a, a sidewalk to connect where I live to the uh, train station located yeah. in Purdy's. So Dan, there are you know, programs yeah. like that. Dan, let me ask you something. Uh, if you included uh, the Rich Bell Road apartments uh, in that area, would that uh, 
I, I don't in believe town. so. I was I can try and find the map, but I think the uh, the low mod area uh, in Mamaroneck and essentially encompasses uh, uh, Harbor Heights. And but, but, uh, let me just tell you why I'm asking. Because behind, uh, across the street from me is Lodge Mont Acres. Uh, behind Lodge Mont Acres, before you get to the parking lot that is Trader Joe's and Auto Stores, there is a playground. It is not the Lodge Mont Acres playground. It is a town of Mamaroneck playground. And that town of Mamaroneck playground, I'm pretty sure, was built with CDGB money. Hmm. Um, so, it's... I could look into that, but I, I know that, um, so for instance, the uh, uh, same thing with the Stanley uh, Avenue playground. Yes. I think we, we received CDBG money for that uh, in the uh, 80s or 90s. In the 90s. Uh, in the 90s. Uh, in order to uh, have a project in, you, you can have a project in a uh, area outside of the, the low mod area but you have to demonstrate uh, somehow that the population utilizing that resource mm -hmm. is predominantly from an LMA area. Okay. So for instance, we looked at- No, uh, I understand it. I oh, understand okay. it. I, I, let, me, let me talk to you about this offline because I, 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 I think that we can you know, try and uh, talk about the kids and a lot of them now live in uh, that area and go to those schools. So that might help. So, yep. I understand where you go, but, but Abby, it, it is on our uh, radar. Uh, and if we can do it that way, we will, but it, it, I, I, I'm hopeful that it will get done one way or the other. Thanks, Tom. I, I appreciate it. And, and if I can just add that, you know, I know Dan and you've all, we've all looked at grants in the past and, you know, if we can't get the grants, I just hope we won't continue to delay this and we will set aside some of our, you know, we do have traffic budget every year set aside. And, and I just hope we will really prioritize this and really, and, and I wanna add also prioritize all of the other pedestrian walking <laughs> studies we've done, um, you know, as well. I, I'm just pointing to the old post road sidewalk because every day I walk up and down it and every day I see hordes of kids walking in unsafe conditions. So. Gotcha. Right. Thank you, Abby. Thanks. Thank you. Victor, you wanna say something? Yeah, I, I just wanted to, well, one one question I, I I was just scrolling through the report and my I've seen a lot of an, an increase a tremendous increase in bicycle traffic in that area. How yeah. how how would that be reconciled? Would you we have to move? I see there are some bullet points, but I didn't do the walk. Is is that incorporated? Um, so that's one question. The other one is what others projects aside this one. I'm not pushing this aside because of one thing I'll say at the end, can be, can be implemented uh, within a certain time frame, and how can that be done? Um, because that that's goes to kind of my third point. We, we're now probably a year into all these assessments, which are great. And I just think we need to find the next step of them, either to identify one project in each area around each school, like be, be kind of clear and square around the village, and prioritize based on safety and, and put aside, but, but they're piling up and they're great ideas. We don't want to happen, you know, some, some of the crossings uh, just uh, on, the, on the avenue, um, just cross, near Columbus Park, for example, they, they, those issues have been identified for, for years and years. I think we're now identifying more and more and it, unless we have a overall plan to integrate all this, uh, different studies, uh, we, we I, I, I just feel frustrated. So we need to may, maybe involve it part of, part of our work scheme for, for the next year, just fit it into, into some of our plan so that they don't get you know, just one after the other and then get caught in the, in the, in the budget, before the budget let's, season and all that. So let's, let, let, let's really let's, identify area by area and, and put some numbers and some time frames to what can be done for right. all so the summaries. We're still on uh, communication to the board. Mr. Mayor, um, I'd like to make sure that uh, and, uh, that the conversations and comments from uh, Abby and 
uh, Trustee Trafor and yourself uh, be included in the public record uh, for the public hearing. Okay. Uh, Kevin. Bogey, you get Kevin up there? Kevin, unmute yourself. Hi, good evening, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Kevin, as you know, and I think I'm just going to get straight to the point because by now, I think everyone knows what I'm really going to ask about, and I'm pretty sure everyone's tired of hearing my voice. So I'll just be very honest right now. Um, and you know what? I'm getting tired of doing this, too. I'll be honest with you. Um, I have a question, I promise, but I'm just going to tell you something that I hope will improve my Marinick somehow. That's my hope. Um, when we moved here to Mamaroneck with my family over 10 years ago, it's because, well, of course, we heard all about Friendly Village, where everyone's welcome, and it rains, sunshine, and kittens and unicorns. Really, that's that's what we were sold. And not really just about Mamaroneck. We were sold this image about America in general. And the more I interact with you, Mr. Mayor, the more that I interact with the Board of Trustees, the more that I take 15 minutes out of my evening to Google search things. Um, relating to the way we spend our tax money, the more I'm convinced that I was sold a lie and I was completely scammed out of, out of whatever this was supposed to be. Um, there's been many topics that have been covered just now. We were talking about morality, which it seems your position is that you are taking a moral position. Um, you know, from your from your your debate just now with Mr. Kuros, it seems like you're defending Mamaroneck, right, from all these outside vicious lawsuits as per your debate with Gisela Marikin, who also called in. And, you know, that's fine. At this point, I'm tired of trying to challenge that because I know that's not true. I know that's 100% not true. You're not really, this is not about defending anyone because if it were, you wouldn't have crammed the Mason, the Grand Street Lofts, Chipotle uh, and everything else that's on this side of Mamaroneck, if this was your wow. concern. And then suddenly it's an Orienta. You're never going to open a Chipotle in Orienta, right? Like that's never going to happen. And I'm not the only one telling you this. You literally had someone else who, of course, I had no contact with. I don't know if you'll believe that. Uh, call in and tell you about the population density near Orienta, right? So it's like not even being in Orienta is enough. You have to be like far in because if you're too close to Old Post Road, apparently that's, that's becoming unsafe for different reasons. Mr. Mayor, I'm tired. Um, ultimately, my questions and comments come from a place of wanting to do democracy and wanting to practice an experiment in democracy where everyone's voice is heard. And the more I try this, the more I'm convinced that Mamaroneck is no democracy. I'm convinced that we are an oligarchy because okay. the responses you give to certain people, please, I, I will have a question in literally five seconds. This is the end of it. Um, the responses you give to certain people are come from Tom Mur Murphy, the, the person, right? Like the genuine person who like I believe in and I want to believe in and would like to be my mayor. But the responses to the likes of me and Ms. Marroquin and Mr. Kiros and Daria, who I'll remind you and I'll remind everyone, was the person who called in from Larchmont and you and I remember specifically Ms. Wenstrup <sighs> at for having a question. Um, I'll it just does not seem like we get the same answers from Mr. Murphy, the person. We get answers from Mr. Murphy, the politician. Mm -hmm. And that's that's enough proof for me. My question, at this point, I'm just trying to keep up with our ongoing expenses. I see on page seven of the audited bills paid that we have made a $16,000 payment to Whiteman Osterman for an Article 78 matter in the month of March, 2021. My question is, what Article 78 is this for? I am literally starting to lose track somewhere between the 500,000 proposed budget for lawsuits, which is ridiculous, the degrading roads on Marinic Avenue, and just my own sanity. I'm losing track of all the lawsuits. Uh -huh. um, and as a follow-up, so can you tell me which Article 78 matter is the Whiteman Osterman $16,000 payment for? What does that correspond to? And in the future, could you please ask these law firms to specify in the invoices which lawsuits they're referring to? Because this would make it, of course, easier to track. Well, the Thank law you. firms do. The law firms do specify in their invoices. Uh, I'm pretty sure, although you know, I'll check. But I'm pretty sure that that's for when Hampshire is suing us that we're defending it. 
Uh, I just want to point out something. We talked about the Mason and the Mason going up. Uh, I was on a board of trustees when a developer bought, the, bought that area. It used to be called Blood Brothers. And he asked the village for a zoning change to allow that to be built because that was originally zoned, uh, you know, it was in zoned industry because it was literally a car uh, junk shop. I, I know the, the, the plot that I, I live on. Is only, the let me finish. I'll let you finish. I was the only trustee to vote against that. And I worked hard to keep that from happening. So to say that I don't care about Washingtonville is just absolutely not true. And if you had done your homework, you would have known that I voted against that zoning change. So now when another developer comes in and wants a zoning change, yes, I'm against it. But there's a consistency there. I was against it in Washingtonville, and I'm against it in Orienta. Thank you for bringing that up, because it doesn't illustrate a change, because there, there's, a, there's a monetary change in the people who live around there. I was against it when it was happening in Washingtonville, and I fought hard to keep it from happening. And a matter of fact, it would have been bigger if it wasn't for me. And also, there are, there are, there are affordable units that were in there that got in there because I put the amendment in. I put the amendment in, but then I voted against the whole thing. So you know what? If you want to know Tom Murphy, the person, you should look at the totality of Tom Murphy's career because I'm not being at all inconsistent. When, when somebody asked for a zoning change in Washingtonville, I was dead set against it. And I fought like heck against it. And I feel the same way about Oriental. It's the same issue to me. You don't have you don't have developers come in here and tell us how to do our zoning. That's what the board of trustees is for. We pass zoning based upon the will of the people at public hearings, uh, like like you're in now. You know, for for a person who doesn't trust democracy, you know, you 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 use it well. Just because you don't get what you want all the time doesn't mean that democracy is not working. You know, I, I don't get what I want all the time, and I'm the mayor. But it's still, that's democracy. There are five people on this board. We all don't agree with each other. And that's life. That's democracy. That's how this works. Democracy doesn't mean getting what you want all the time. It means coming to a place where an agreement is made by people that represent the community that were voted that way. And to call me an oligarch, I, I, I don't even understand where that came from. You know, I... I I, I, I don't I don't fit the bill, but that's your opinion. But I, I, I can't I couldn't let that go. Uh, but thank you for your opinion, and I'm sorry you feel that way. And I hope that you are you know more in tune with what's going on in this community and speak to the totality of it, and not just this one instance where the developer who you know about is you know asking you to come and do this. So next, go to Richard Limegruber. Rich, Aquarius is getting a shot. Couldn't find my unmute button, I'm sorry. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for letting me uh, speak tonight. My name is Richard Limegruber. Um, I have a couple of points, um, being the president of the Chamber of Commerce and then one being a local resident. First and foremost, I just wanna say a heartfelt thank you uh, to Mayor Tom Murphy, all the trustees, uh, Jerry Barbero, Dan Sarnoff, and even Courtney Wong, who have done exceptionally great jobs in renegotiating the price for the outdoor dining. Uh, the great news is we went from two, we now have five restaurants with the barriers up and we have th three more on the way, uh, as far as I can tell right now. So I wanna thank you on behalf of the Chamber of Commerce for all the restaurants, for all the, all the businesses on the avenue and also as a, as a resident. So thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, the second thing is um, because of the outpouring love of all the Mamaronek residents um, on Facebook, if many of you know, there's the uh, Facebook mom and dads groups and all these other great Facebook groups that allow us as, as neighbors, friends and family to talk and come up with some great ideas. Uh, there's a GoFundMe page that's being established for restaurants to help beautify 
the outdoor dining space. Um, so we're looking to, as a chamber of commerce, we're looking to also potentially donate some money to that great cause. Uh, they're looking and talking with the Girl Scout local troop to actually, uh, once we get some planters, uh, to actually plant some flowers in them for those businesses. And one of the questions that we want to know is, is there going to be any problems if on top of those concrete ba barriers uh, to put flower pots up there? Uh, to help beautify the area? Not from me. No, okay. Do they need to be anything specific? Wood or can they be ceramic or what, whatever they're gonna be? Is there any, any kind of restrictions on what kind of flower pots we put up? You, you know, Rich, if, if you look at Largemont, yep. uh, they, they have the flower pots that kind of have a B in the bottom. The panel, yeah. yeah. And, and, they fit, and they fit over uh, the top of... Uh, the concrete barrier. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. And that, it, yeah, this way it won't be knocked off as easy. And they're right. mostly they're mostly like a plastic material. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, like because that. I think a ceramic would be a too heavy. Yeah. Messy break. Expensive. Okay. So as far as that goes, we're also gonna look for donations from local flower shops to help donate some flowers. So we're trying to make this a really good community event. And the outpouring of people on Facebook that have reached out to me. Uh, really goes to show you that this is a really spectacular village to live in um, because we have so many people who are looking to help out. Have you have you thought about doing a um, setting up a nonprofit the way the village of Larchmont did? I mean, there were there were residents of the village of Larchmont who set this up. Right, right. Uh, Larchmont one, right? Yeah. Yeah. So so I have not. <laughs> I I have a couple of hats I'm wearing these days, and it's you know not something I have the capacity or or ability to do. But there are some people who potentially could be doing that. I'll make that suggestion to them. So thank you for that, uh, Nora. Uh, the, the other uh, uh, thing I just want to talk about, Dan, uh, Dan Sarnoff and I had a conversation a couple of ago about when a business comes to town and looking to add uh, an existing or new business into the town, uh, where do they go? Who do they talk to? And I had suggested uh, the Chamber of Commerce could potentially help out on that. Uh, but basically adding almost like a flow chart to the, to the village website, to the chamber website of who do they go speak to, who are the people they need to fill out applications and give them to, and help um, small businesses really don't take four months to open up because they're waiting on certain things. Um, I think, you know, although the village has a lot of restrictions, that can actually be overcome by providing instructions and directions in a form of a flow chart. Um, and I think that would be very helpful to small businesses coming in and, and you know, wait, taking four months to open up their doors. Uh, Dan, is there any update on that? I know you said you would look into that. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's been a bit, uh, yeah, it's been right, tied yeah. up the last month and a half, so. No, I get it, I get it. Uh, yeah, so. But All I, right, I so can, that's uh, just something I want to keep on everybody's mind. I think that would be very helpful, you know. Okay. Uh, the, the last thing on the chamber side is uh, thank you again to Jerry and uh, for the uh, cars and coffee that are coming to Mamaronek Avenue this Sunday between 8 and 11. Uh, one of our newest members, Enthusiast Auto Works, uh, right on Mamaronek Avenue, is sponsoring this event. Um, Dan Natchez, I saw the email you sent over. I'm not exactly sure where you saw the food trucks. I know that we had said coffee and we're going to work on that. Um, it was really meant to say, hey, come in the morning, have a cup of coffee and check out cars. It wasn't supposed to be, we're going to provide coffee. And I understand where the, the conflict comes from in the email. But then you had also mentioned that you saw on, on somebody's website about having food trucks and if they have licenses and permits, but I can't find that anywhere. It's on their website. On Enthusiast Auto Works website? Yep. I'm, I'm on there right now. I can't find anything. Uh, they're, okay. they're, they're, what they have is a link to it, uh, to uh, their announcement, and it's uh, very clear. Do you know where that announcement was? Because I'm uh, I, I, just, right. Richard, I don't have it in front of me. Okay, okay. Can you send me a link, Dan? Would that be possible so I can look, take a look? And I also reached out to them, by the way, so that I, I, I'm asking them the same question. Do they have permits for those? So Okay. Um, and then my last thing as a resident um, of uh, 220 Highview Street in Mamaronek, um, as many of you know, it's funny, you guys just mentioned Grant Street, uh, that, that building over there. As somebody who was watching the construction be built and excited that it's no longer that um, falling down restaurant that we used to have there, 
Uh, one of the things that I saw happen during that construction was the construction company took off the street signs about no parking and it got replaced by one sign all the way at the other end of the block and from halfway down the block all the way up to Mamaronek Avenue on Grant Street. Cars park there all the time and I've called the police a couple of times but continue, people continue to park there all day long and it's very hard when you have the uh, car wash parking their cars halfway out in the street and then you have cars illegally parked on the other side to get through. It's very slim and I've seen cars come flying around that corner <clears throat> and almost go head on. So I think whoever can help with that, I think there needs to be a sign put up on the corner of Mamaronek Avenue and Grant Street that says no parking from here back because as of right now, as you drive past that first sign, there is no other sign all the way to Mamaronek Avenue and people just park there thinking they're not doing it. So if I can get somebody to look into that, that would be great. Right. Thank you, Rich. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Have a great night and thanks for everything. Have a good night. All right. uh, can I, Tom, can I just say one thing? Sure, Nora. Doreen Roney has been emailing. She's trying to raise her hand. She's the top number on my screen, the only number, but she isn't able to raise her hand, so. All right. Doreen, on mute. How do we do this? Doreen, can you unmute yourself? I'm unmuted. No, Good no, evening, everyone. No, Boy, this has been a real challenge to try to speak during public comments. Um, at your last meeting before you adopted the budget, I tried like heck. I'm just wondering, because I'm not using a computer, if the Q&A and chat function is operable. No. To raise your hand, you have to press star nine if you've dialed in. And to mute or unmute yourself, you would have to dial star six. I'm very much aware of how to unmute myself. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. OK, I don't know who told me what I have to do, but I thought you were hearing me. At any rate, um, there was some mention that um, possibly the reason why you're not using Q&A in chat is because this can't be captured. And I did send you an email um, regarding functions on Zoom that it can be done automatically. I also wanted to bring up that um, all the land use boards are using the Q&A in chat. And the reason why I'm bringing this up tonight is, is I had a terrible time during your budget um, meeting prior to your adoption of trying to get my point across. So I will do it now. Um, even though the budget has been passed, my mm -hmm. question was, when you were reviewing the building department, I noticed that Dan Gray uh, was within those budget items as being paid. Was that an error, or is, that, uh, is he still being paid? That's not an error. That's... I know you guys were bantering about trying to find some money and keep it, keep the budget in check. Um, so that's what I wanted to do then. So I, I don't think anyone wants to answer me. However, okay. my other Somebody question is, is, I'm sorry, yeah. Doreen, that, that's an, actually it was discussed and explained while we having the meeting, but I would prefer uh, somebody from staff to explain. So it shows up, Doreen, okay. it shows up, it shows up at, when you look at those sheets, you see, several years of budget uh, expenditures. So that's what you're saying. Right. But I can tell you that that's not the case. Okay. That individual that you um, met the other... is not being paid right now. Great. That, well, that, that didn't really have to be answered right now, but in, in the yellow columns that you guys were trying to figure out how you were gonna thankfully scrimp and save and try to keep the budget in line, um, I want to draw the board's attention to the fact that the village paid about $40,000 um, for the matrix report that uh, reviewed land use in the village and the building department. I haven't heard much over the past several years as to if those recommendations were implemented, uh, where it stands right now, and those kinds of things, because I know a part-time office person was added to the budget uh -huh. and there's a senior office assistant 
However, that report pretty much uh, shed light on the fact that we had plenty of staff, and if things were done in a different way, uh, we can optimize the functioning yeah. of land use and the building department in a better way. Jerry, As did that, you want to that? I'm sorry, Mayor. Did you want to address that? Because I know you, you, the part uh, Doreen, that was, that was a question that I saw during a meeting that I had missed um, that the Board of Trustees had a, uh, had a question on and I answered that. Um, we promoted a senior office assistant and we added a part-time staff member that was already working for us through an temp agent right. to, keep up, to catch us up on the work that had to be done. So in fact, what I am doing is changing the way the building department is working by trying to minimize the amount of staff. We did not add an additional employee that has health benefits and pension and all of those things. We basically are reshuffling the deck and including the planning board in that um, restructuring process. I can also tell That's you- That's great, but there, are, there, there, were, there were many other things in that, in that report. Doreen, Are you speaking, I, Jerry? I I'm you, sorry, I cut you off. Let me address yeah. the report. I can tell you that when I first came here, um, I asked about the report. Uh, it was one of the items that I had to research and review for my interview process. And then when I came here, I was told that basically the report wasn't worth the paper it was printed on. So I am working through the issues and problems at the building department. I am working through the restructuring. It takes a little bit of time. Uh, we had a planning director that didn't work out. I immediately changed that direction because I realized after four months that wasn't going to work. So it's evolving, it's getting better, and we will continue to change and adapt as we need to. Thank you very much for that explanation because that, that was my concern last time. Um, the other thing is, is uh, FOIL. It's very interesting because I did a FOIL request about a month ago. This whole situation has been resolved, though, to this date. And nobody seemed to have received it. Um, I contacted the clerk treasurer's office. It was resolved. But I'm not understanding how I did the FOIL request through the proper channels and it didn't get through the system. I understand. I make mistakes, too. But... You know, when you when you do a FOIL request on FOIL, VOM, whatever it is, um, I would think that it gets into the system. Somehow. I guess a person does that. It doesn't automatically generate on a spreadsheet. Is that my understanding? Maybe it's overloaded. It gets overloaded. Well, it's quite interesting because I did a FOIL request and there were no records responsive and then Two weeks later, a record appeared that I requested on an agenda that I was quite shocked about. So, okay. I don't know. That needs that I, really needs okay. some work. Mm. Right. Thank you, Doreen. Thanks, Doreen. Thanks Bye. for your time tonight. Appreciate you listening. Have a good night. Bye bye. Okay. Uh, the next up is public hearing. Public hearing on fiscal year. Uh, 22, 23, 24 community development block grant program. Link for county manual program. Uh, like a motion to open a public hearing. So move. I need a second. Nora, you're muted. You guys gotta unmute yourself. You gotta... Sorry, second, sorry. Okay, uh, Augie, call roll. Trustees, Lucas? Yes. Uh, Natchez? Yes. The floor? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Okay. Any public comment? Let's see anybody in the audience who wants to address this. Uh, <coughs> yes, Dan? Just again, uh, as part of the record, uh, so this is being taped, that the comments that were made in public public comment section that pertain to this uh, public hearing be incorporated. Yeah, okay. Uh, anybody else on the board? 
Uh, Mr. Sarnoff, do you want to give us a brief rundown? Sure. Um, so I, as I mentioned, uh, the, the three-year cycle for the Community Development Block Grant Program is opening up uh, again, and uh, I think applications are due uh, at the end of June. <clears throat> um, I actually did find the uh, that low mod map. Would you like me to share that uh, with uh, everyone so they can see the areas that we can actually that are eligible to have uh, apply for? Uh, hey, give me a second. Okay, so let me. Uh, I think everyone sees this. Not yet. Not yet. Share your screen then. Uh, I am sharing my screen. That's odd. Yeah, well, it's not. you must be sharing it with yourself because the rest of us yeah. can't see. Let me uh, try. There you go. Okay. You so go. Um, as I'm describing, it basically covers Harbor Heights uh, and then um, uh, everything uh, south of, or sorry, north of uh, I-95, uh, between I-95, the village border, and the uh, railroad tracks. And then uh, we call the Central Business District down here. So. Uh, that's why I mentioned to uh, Ms. Roberts about uh, uh, Old Post Road, which is uh, located, uh, actually, it's not even on this map. No. They don't uh, give an entire map of the village, just the uh, Lomad area. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's where we're eligible to uh, apply for grants for. Uh, we have been uh, the successful recipient of millions and millions of dollars since uh, the Urban County Consortium was created, uh, I believe in the 1970s. Uh, we were able to do all of Mamaroneck Avenue uh, up to um, uh, basically right around Grand Street. Um, uh, we through portions of Old White Plains Road, uh, East and West Boston Post Road between uh, basically St. Thomas Church and uh, I believe it's uh, Du Bois. Uh, we've replaced sidewalks. Uh, what I was thinking as the, uh, pri you know, the priorities for this current round of funding uh, would be a completion of uh, additional phases of the uh, improvements identified uh, around the Mamaroneck Avenue School, <clears throat> which I believe the Traffic Commission looked at in, I think it was 2018 or 2019. Uh, we have already received a grant for the first phase of that project, but I think uh, all the improvements told uh, are somewhere around uh, $2 million. Uh, so if we can, you know, the first round, I think we were approved for 350000 If we can get, you know, several more grants during this cycle, we could potentially complete all those improvements as identified uh, in that uh, walking safety assessment. Uh, I've already had our uh, traffic engineer, Mr. Carmody, uh, look at uh, the uh, cost estimates he prepared uh, a couple of years ago to update them. So we, uh, if, we, if that's the direction we're looking to move with our CDBG grants, that we have all the necessary information. Um, yeah, not making it shovel ready, but you know, close to shovel ready, at least uh, knowing all the quantities that, that are needed. Uh, the uh, attached to the uh, agenda are some of the publications from the county that uh, detail the type of projects they look to fund, who's eligible to submit projects. Uh, in addition to the village, uh, not-for-profits are eligible to submit projects, uh, and they have done so on several occasions. Uh, if the board may recall, I think there were uh, a couple of uh, renovation projects that uh, uh, came to the board uh, for your information because they required uh, uh, consistency uh, determinations uh, uh, from the state and they asked for our local opinion. Uh, I know uh, m uh, the management company of Mamarina Towers submitted uh, a grant request a couple of years ago to implement uh, infrastructure improvements at that property. Uh, but, uh, Again, this is an opportunity for the public to uh, speak as to what they think our priorities should be for CDBG funding, both at a uh, municipal level and also for not for profits. So it's kind of the Thank you, Dan. medium version. Dan, 
Dan, I so I think that CDB G money is generally limited to census tracts. Correct. Well, it, generally there are other other ways you can get money if you are um, uh, if you are if you're looking at programs that uh, are directly benefit uh, handicapped po populations or senior populations because they are considered to be uh, by default eligible for, for those types of programs. So, um, for instance, if uh, we wanted to incorporate ADA improvements at a facility, that could be an eligible pro an eligible project, mm -hmm. insofar as they are the majority users of the facility. So, but, uh, I mean, do, is, do, what's the likelihood of trying to do sidewalks in areas that are not in the census tracts that are, that they've identified? Uh, no, very very little. The answer is zero. I mean, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be considered an eligible project unless you could demonstrate that um, the people using it, the majority of people using it are coming from uh, a low mod neighborhood. And that process is extremely onerous. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that, that's... Uh, yeah, I mean, the county basically requires, you know, uh, uh, CDBG basically requires you to collect uh, income tax returns to demonstrate that the people using... Well, we, we were able to do it with the spray ground and we were able to do it with uh, uh, Stanley Avenue Park. Yeah, but you know, now, now the CDBG program is uh, much more strict about the documentation requirements. Okay. So what about the safety, what about the other traffic safety assessments that are in the Mamaroneck Avenue district? I mean, that seems to be a logical place to apply. Well, yeah, and, and that's why I've had mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Carmody update his cost estimates right. so we could uh, apply for those phases. And is the Community Counselors Counseling Center in that? Uh, the Community Counseling Center is located in the uh, LMA. Uh, they, are, they are applying for their own community development project. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah, and yeah, we, we had a, uh, at the county's request, we held a meeting with uh, several of the not-for-profits. And my understanding is that uh, uh, Ms. Martinez from the CRC is following up separately with the county. Yes, she is. Okay. And also, what about St Stanley Avenue, the Community Counseling Center? Um, they are technically not a not-for-profit. Okay, but we, so, we own the building. Uh, we, we do own the building. Um, I spoke to the county about that. Um, at this time, we have no you know, we are looking to do a building condition report, mm -hmm. uh, but we have no estimates as to what the projects would cost. So it's a little difficult to apply for grants for it's that. It's in the track. It's in one of the tracks. It's, oh, um, it's uh, I, I actually it may not be in the track, but because we own it, I think we can probably demonstrate the uh, we can demonstrate the population. That that might be something that we can uh, uh, we can take advantage of. Uh, again, uh, the current requirements are pretty onerous as far as uh, collecting data. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't believe that um, because it, they, they, they service youth, um, mm -hmm. they are not an assumed population. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, if, if they had a more, if they had a component for, say, like seniors, mm -hmm. that may be uh, something that would be more advantageous as far as CDBG grants, but. You know, I think you know some of the other uh, avenues we're trying to look at to get some funding for uh, restoration work at, at the uh, at the counseling center. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, need a motion to close the public hearing. Hello. Second. Morgan, please. Wait, no one. Okay, no one. Trustees Lucas? Yes. Trustee Natchez? Yes. Trustee Tafor? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Yes. Uh, abstract of the order of voucher, uh, vouchers. Vouchers. Uh,
Excuse me one second. Shouldn't I do the amendments before I do the order to vote? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Order there, Rogi. We'll speak about That's this later. Mayor. Uh, <laughs> we'll start with 2C. Uh, resolution for transfer amendment. Okay. Uh, Resolute authorized to execute budget transfers to fund over budget accounts. So this is taking from the general fund $51,000 and putting it to park salaries. And the next one is appropriate fund balance, uh, $23,700 and putting it to recreation and salaries. Uh, the next one is from recreation part-time and putting it into regular recreation salaries. Uh, this is transferring PBA optical welfare to cover final invoice for dental and optical insurance. So we're taking uh, $1,977.33 from the PBA disability fund and putting it into the optical welfare fund of the PBA. Somebody have any questions or concerns? Jerry, can you explain how, why we're uh, transferring about roughly $80,000 into recreation salaries? Uh, Parks foreman payout at the end of his career. He had a very long career. And so we pay out his vacation, his accrued comp time, as well as his um, uh, portion of his sick time and uh, personal time. Um, he was one of the individuals that received the, um, the uh, buyout. In addition to that, we have uh, out of title pay for several employees um, who, and you know what out of title pay is, when they're working uh, um, in a title above their title, there's a um, calculation, there's a formula to give them the appropriate um, money. In addition to that, we had an employee uh, that went out uh, sick and we had to cover, we had to cover his salary uh, during a period of time. Those are the three items that uh, impact that. The largest is the retirement of the parks general foreman. Okay. Any other questions? No, no. You need a motion? So moved. Thank you. A second? Second. Or we call roll. Trustee Lucas? Yes. Trustee Natchez? Yes. Trustee Tafour? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, the next item is 2D, is a budget transfer, uh, authorizing budget amendment to recognize insurance recoveries for an expense to repair uh, street maintenance fee. So basically we're getting $8,551.13 as an insurance settlement. Uh, it's going from the insurance recoveries fund and then it's going into the auto repair fund. Yeah. So should we just basically move in the check from one fund to the other? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Any questions or concerns? Like a motion, please. Good. Victor to four. Victor. I'll make the second. Uh Corby, please. Trustees Lucas? Yes. Trustee Natchez? Yes. Trustee to four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh Budget resolution uh, authorizing budget amendment to fund water fund hydrant rental expenses. Uh, the, the rental fees had not gone up in five years. The Westchester Joint Water Works uh, is uh, increasing them from 15. From, what was that? From 15 to $20. Uh, we, this means that we have to move $17,000 out of the water fund and into the hydrant rental fees. Questions or concerns? Yes. I'm confused. I thought we own the hydrants. No. I thought we pay for that. The, or, we, we rent the hydrants. So the, you're telling me that the Westchester Waterworks owns the hydrants? Yes. I'm not sure if that's the case, but that, I'd like to find out more about that. If that's the, that is the case, Dan. 
So I'm, I'm sorry you're not sure, but that is the case. Don't think that's what we were told at the last meeting uh, over a year ago. Uh, I think you're misremembering. Uh, but anyway, I need a motion. But I'll make the motion. I'll second. Mr. Fosco? Trustee Lucas? Yes. Trustee Natchez? No. Trustee Tafor? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Yes. Thank you. Okay, now let's get back to the audit of the vouchers. The main audit tonight uh. is $726,268.31. Uh, I just want to point out on page one, because I, I actually get this question a lot. Uh, on page one, there is... Uh, <coughs> was it on page one? Give me one second. Yes, uh, th there was a a, a uh, bill for ZBA Murphy Brothers. Uh, I get asked a lot if I am one of them. Although I have two brothers, I am not the Murphy Brothers uh, that uh, has the business in the village of America. So my, my brothers have PhDs. Uh, none of them ever picked up a tool in their lives. I can attest to that because I went to high school with the Murphy Brothers who have that. <laughs> I know they are not your brothers. They are not my brothers, no. My, my, my brothers are very cerebral. You wouldn't know it from talking to me. Well, they'd be nice brothers. Yeah. Uh, there's one in every family. Uh, any other questions or concerns? Daniel? Page six, uh, near the top, Aspects Wildlife LLC. Mm -hmm. Pay that monthly or is that for work or monthly uh, we have a supplemental charge which he only charges us when he does quite a bit of additional coyote scouting uh, of 650 but his monthly charge to handle all of our issues throughout the village is 550. So when you say additional uh, I'm sorry can you explain um, I didn't or, Dan from time to time when we have um, a lot of coyote activity. We ask Chris to go out and do some scouting and give us some information. And so when um, he puts in additional hours, he will charge us uh, $650 in addition to 550 uh, for the additional work that we uh, ask him to do when there's um, higher coyote activity in, in the village. That was something we established when the coyote situation was, you know, Oh. Okay. Page 29, uh, three, uh, three quarters of the way down, fees, uh, Hillary Sweeney, uh, circus. What is VMDC? It was a Meredith Day Camp. Okay. And on page 32. Okay. We have the town planner of Westchester, twelve hundred dollars. Sorry, thirteen hundred dollars. Yeah, we we put the um, our recycling calendar in there, so that's the the cost for for doing that. For for which calendar? I'm sorry. We in addition to the the recycling calendar, we we, we the recycling calendar. Okay. Right. okay, thank you. Anybody else? Victor. I have a question. A question for Augie, maybe Laura, since she's, she's with us tonight. Uh, this this audit has the escrows at, at pages one and two at the beginning. We typically find them at the end. I don't see anything different, but why why would that be? Or are we changing it for good? Or it was just once? What's the is that, is that, does it mean anything? Why, why is it different? Augie, do you want to answer that? It's the switching of the um, the accounts over to the general fund. It's a requirement. Oh, go ahead, Laura. 
Knock it out. <laughs> Sorry, you can answer if you want. New York State is requiring us to switch them from the TA account to the A account general fund. So it's really just um, categorizing them. So now you're seeing them A, so you're seeing them in the first fund, as opposed to TA, which always came at the end of the abstract. It's just an alphabetical thing. Well, there were, there were different funds. Is it trust and agency fund and is it an expendable trust fund? New York State issued an opinion that these funds have to be consolidated into the general fund. So in the past, they, they literally, if you look at the abstract, you'll see T and T and A. Right. Now that they're being consolidated into the general fund, they're all under the A fund. Right. And it just goes alphabetically, A, B, C, D for every fund. Thank you. He explains it much better, much better than me. Oh no, you're much more eloquent. I, I think you meld it well together. And Anybody else? Okay, uh, I need a motion. I'll make the motion. Second. Augustino. Trustees Lucas? Yes. Patches? Yes. Trustee Tafour? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, the next manual <coughs> is. Uh, Mostly water bills and a couple other things. That's mostly water bills from assisted joint waterworks for our various buildings. Uh, any questions or concerns? No. No. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Thank you, Nora. You're welcome. Boogie. Trustees, Lucas? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Before? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Thank you all. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, resolution scheduling, old business. Resolution scheduling uh, public hearing for PLRD 2021 metered parking on West Boston Post Road. Uh, the, the village board has decided to put uh, metered parking uh, between uh, Delancey or uh, it's on the other side, Orienta, uh, going uh, north up until Mamaronek Avenue. Um, and this is a resolution that will schedule the public hearing because it's a law uh, from May 24th, 2021. Tom. Yes, ma'am. The agenda says it's going to, going to be held. Or my copy of the agenda says it's going to be held. That's what it says online, yeah. too. Well, why is it going to be held? I don't know, but I kind of think people, if anybody had comments on it, they thought we weren't going to discuss it. Why does it say to be held? I'm sure it was just a mistake. I think we held it over from the work session. I mean, OK. Yeah, I, I, it's they, a mistake, they, but. they can comment on it on the 24th. This is just the schedule of public hearing. I'll make the motion to schedule a public hearing for the 24th. We need the money. I mean, I, it just is it proper to have it incorrectly described on the agenda? Mayor, the agenda doesn't have the proposed local law. Okay. It's part of it. I'm not. No, no, no. So on, 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 the, on the paper copy of the agenda, it says resolution scheduling proposed hearing for PLLD, metered parking in West Boston Post Road, and then in parentheses to be held. So if you're looking at the agenda online, you wouldn't think this was on the meeting. I just want to be careful. But even without, without regard to that, there's no proposed local law that's in your packets. Oh, that's another good point, Bob. Yeah. No, I, think, I think we just finalized the language in the law uh, today. Is that we can't, that's marker? Can we schedule the public hearing without the law? No. 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 Okay. Then it's going to be held. Okay. <laughs> I withdraw my motion. Uh, please have this ready for the 24th staff so that we can get this out and we can get some you know, revenue in. Okay? Yes. Oh, you gave me a big yes there. 
Thank you, Ogie. Somebody listens to me. New business. Uh, resolution extending ad hoc ethics review committee term to December 31st, 2021. Uh, we talked about this in the work session. Uh, any, anybody have any questions or concerns? I, I just want to say they're working very, very hard. They're starting to write up their comments now, and they just wanted to be sure they had enough time to be able to still be in session when we had questions for them. Okay. You know what we should do next time we have an ad hoc committee? Uh, just say that they're, uh, they will be dissolved after they give their final report. This way we don't have to. But, you know, this is fine with me. Uh, anybody have a concern? No. I'll make the motion. Thank you, Nora. I'll second. <coughs> oh, please. Trustees Lucas? Yes. Natchez? Yes. The floor? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Thank you. Uh, resolution authorizing budget transfer from trust fund to rehabilitate basketball court at Jefferson Avenue Park. Uh, we talked about this in the work session. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, during COVID, when they took down the rim and the backboard to keep kids from uh, playing basketball because we were afraid that it was going to be a point of uh, contagion, uh, they found out that the rim and the basketball uh, backboard were no longer serviceable. So they are putting in a new rim, a new backboard, uh, a new pole, and new surfacing on the courts. Uh, and we are moving seven thousand uh, dollars uh, from uh, from from this fund that was the, you know seven thousand four hundred dollars, and we are moving it from uh, a fund that was developed uh, in the early part of the century uh, to uh, make uh, developers pay eighty five hundred dollars for every new uh, apartment or unit that they brought into the village. And right now it is $440,146.81 in the recreation trust fund. This isn't in the general fund. It's in a fund that just can be used for recreation. So uh, a basketball court definitely falls into the use of that money, good use of that money. Anybody have questions or concerns? Um, I just, I would say that the, um, I think that the, the rec commission has worked with the recs, rec and parks commission have worked with the rec and parks staff to come up with some ideas about what we can use this fund for, and um, they're going to keep they're going to keep having the discussion. So I think that might be interesting to the members of the public, and I think it would be great if I mean it, it seems like an awful lot of money, but um, I think we have to like use it wisely, and um, I think it's a it's a good opportunity for community conversations about what kinds of recreation facilities we want in the community, um, and I think the staff has been mindful of trying to. Um, allocate resources from this fund back into the neighborhoods from where, where it came. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Okay, I'll make the motion. Second. Thank you. Orgy, please. Trustees, Lucas? Yes. Natchez? Yes. The floor? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, 4C? Is a resolution to execute uh, New York State DOT equitable business opportunities system under user agreement. Uh, Mr. Sonoff, give us a very brief description. Sure. Uh, this is a reporting tool uh, for the DOT for uh, locally administered federal aid projects like Hillside Avenue Bridge and requires a board resolution authorizing us to register the system. And it should cost us uh, nothing or minimus uh, out of our pocket. That's correct. Anybody have questions or concerns? I'll make the motion. Second. Oh, you please. Trustees, Lucas? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Before? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, resolution. Authorizing budget transfer uh, amendment to fund removal of the Gundaboom. Uh, the Gundaboom, you'll see down in the Harbor Island Beach, uh, it was installed probably in 2002, 2003. That is the second Gundaboom. The first Gundaboom was destroyed by an oil spill by one of the uh, boat yards. Uh, the Gundaboom at the time when it was installed 
help to lower uh, the fecal coliform numbers inside the Gundaboom. Uh, since then, the village has done a lot of work in, uh, to uh, lower uh, the pollution in the harbor. Uh, the Gundaboom has deteriorated greatly. Uh, it no longer serves the purpose. Uh, the readings inside the Gundaboom lately have been akin to the readings outside the Gundaboom. Uh, just so people know, if the village gets more than a half of inch of rain, Westchester County automatically closes down the beach uh, because of the runoff uh, from our streets that feeds into the harbor. Uh, that was true when the Gundaboom was in its heyday, and it is true now, uh, but it's, it's closed much less often now than it used to be. Uh, so we've, we've done some good work as a community uh, over a long time, and it's paying off. But the Gundaboom is... Uh, as, as an eyesore and as the, uh, as the head of recreation committee, uh, the recreation department uh, uh, called it today, it, it's a beach junk and uh, it would be better for everybody if it was removed. And this is $20,000 to remove it. And if the, uh, the anchors that hold it in might be repurposed uh, in the future. Uh, the, uh, the harbor master was, uh, uh, clear about that tonight. So this is just to remove the gun to vote, twenty thousand dollars. Any questions? I would. I mean, I'd also say. Even if we were, if we decided to replace the gunder boom, which is very, very expensive, we still would mm -hmm. have to take this step. So yes. it's an interim step for safety and practicality, and it doesn't commit us to not having a gunder boom in the future. Right. You're correct, Nora, and I. And I, I I was on the board when we were talking about replacing it uh, after it got destroyed, and, and I, I seem to remember it was north of 200. Oh, it's I think more than that now. Yeah, I, I bet that's what I mean. And that was 2002, 2001. Uh, so if you can even get them these days, check eBay. Uh, I'll make the motion. Second. Orgy, please. Trustees Lucas. Yes. Natchez? Yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Thank you all. Uh, next item on the agenda is communication and board round two. And of course, Glenn. Glenn. Good evening once again. Um, once again, I just would like to uh, reiterate that um, it's... Uh, Next couple of weeks, we should uh, start looking at putting together a capital budget that will incorporate sidewalks, other other matters that you want to do, prioritize, and figure out the funding. I'd also like, uh, in the absence of Jerry, uh, your staff did a terrific job. They were they were wonderful. Thank they you. filled in. In fact. Dan Sornoff was absolutely magnificent. He was great. But the rumor is that the mayor said Jerry Hu on two occasions are absolutely not true. I don't blame him. Have a good night. Thank you. Thanks, Glenn. I don't even know what that is. Uh, report from the village manager. Mayor, earlier today, I had a meeting with several members of the arts uh, committee of the village and we met at 169 Mount Pleasant. We discussed the re-landscaping of a portion of that, um, of the corner of Library Lane and, um, and Prospect, um, where the bench is going to be installed and dedicated to um, Miss Mary Louise Cox, if I have the first name right. Yes, that's it. Um, and after that meeting, I spoke to Mr. John Cox, her son, and uh, we came up with a plan to re-landscape and in fact, potentially add an additional piece of artwork to accompany the two uh, sculptures that are there right now. And so I just wanted to update the board on that. And um, if they had, if the board has any concerns or issues, but Mr. Cox is donating the plant material. He's in the business that I used to be in. And, um, uh, we will be um, working together. Um, park staff will be planting the material and uh, uh, making sure that uh, that area is re-landscaped and uh, 
and beautified um, to complement the bench and uh, and any new artwork that may be uh, that may be installed. Um, we're looking to do this uh, starting the first week of June, so we're very excited about it. And I just wanted to update the board on that. And I think Nora knows some of it, some of the details. Well, yeah. So the the it's you know it started out small with the Arts Council wanting to um, install a bench opposite the library. Um, because Mary Louise's husband and she were very involved in the library and a lot of her poetry books are in a collection at the library. And then her son, who is a landscaper, decided that he wanted to, you know, bring some more landscaping. And then the Arts Council thought that it would also be nice to do another piece of sculpture. So it's been a really nice project for the village. And um, Jerry's just made sure that whatever gets planted is easy to maintain. Yeah. And the Parks Department and the Rec Department have, you know, worked with the Arts Council. So it's just a really kind of nice um, collaboration to honor an important um, Mamaroneck resident. Yep. Um, other than that, I, um, there is one item to file for the record and it's the um, Stop DWI Agreement. Uh, and that's my complete report, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Clerk Treasurer? Yes, Mayor. Uh, I have two items. The first item is uh, GP permits will expire on May 31st. Please renew them on the village's website or book an appointment to come to the clerk treasurer's office to renew your permit. Uh, the second item, which I'd like to discuss with everyone, is the tax bill preparation process uh, that we do this time of the year. During this time of the year, we take uh, the tax, the assessment rolls from the town of Bryan, the town of Mamaroneck, we join them and we come up with a total assessment. That total assessment is used to calculate the tax rate. Uh, the reason why I bring this up is that as we were analyzing the assessment rolls, there's an error on the town of Rye's assessment roll. Uh, this error, if they're not able to get to it, might cause delays in the tax bills going out. Right. The advice we've been given so far is to issue the tax bills with the error and then issue a refund. Um, we're trying not to proceed that path. Why not? It's 5,200 bills. Uh, just the mailing alone is $10,000 and the income oh. to taxpayers. So I wanted to advise the board an update of this current situation. That is all for tonight from the clerk treasurer. <laughs> That's a mouthful. Thank you, Wogan. What's the village attorney? Nothing for me, Mayor. Uh, minutes, commissions, boards, committees. Uh, minutes of the Board of Trustees work session regular of uh, April 26th and special work session of April 20th. Minutes of the Zoning Board of Appeals meetings of January 7th and February 4th, 2021. Minutes of the Ad Hoc Ethics Review Committee meeting of February 25th, March 18th, April 8th, and April 14th. Uh, minutes of the Planning Board meeting of February 24th, 2021. Minutes of the Arts Council meeting of April 5th, 2021. Uh, and before we adjourn, it's something that uh, came to my mind. The gentleman before uh, Mr. Duarte uh, was talking about Mamaroneck Avenue paving. Uh, the village of Mamaroneck, and, and I've dealt with this uh, both in emails to folks and online, the village of Mamaroneck is responsible for Mamaroneck Avenue from Harbor Island Park to the train tracks. Uh, we paved that in 2019. The county is responsible for the train tracks to the end of the village through Harbor Heights. And that, yes, that is in disrepair. Uh, it definitely needs repaving. And the county is scheduled to do that uh, at the end of this year, the beginning of next year. Uh, so I understand that it's in disrepair. We have brought it up to our county uh, leaders. They have a plan to uh, repave it. They've talked to the village staff about staging it and it will be repaved this year. So uh, with that being said, I will uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. No, second. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Good night, everyone. Thank you, good night. Thank you.